विद्युत सुरक्षित भारत अभियान इट्स अ वंडरफुल मिशन और ऑब्जेक्टिव दैट यू हैव बीन कैरिंग ऑन विद विद द सपोर्ट ऑफ वेरियस गवर्नमेंट एंटाइटीज एंड एज द पार्ट ऑफ एंड को ऑर्गेनाइजर ऑफ दिस प्रोग्राम uh and on behalf of um, the south asian lightning network as a chairman uh, this is uh, um, my my honor to to have us wonderful people uh, very very eminent people working in the field of lightning as well as uh, in the field of uh, electrical uh, safety particularly in the low voltage end so uh to begin with uh, i think uh, Uh, we all are today's mission is little bit uh, uh diff- but slightly different than uh, what uh, rachit bharat avyan is uh, so we are talking uh, today we are taking up the issue where we have plenty of uh, confusions and uh, you know uh, people are uh, with little knowledge knowledge making uh, some mess uh, out of uh, uh some products and so on so uh, we will be taking up this issue uh for for the knowledge for the greater uh, for the sake of greater knowledge of uh, the audience we have today participants we have today although i know many of them are very prominent figures and uh, 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 they have been uh, already uh, working with all these uh, things but uh, still there are certain confusions uh, uh, left in the in the among the participants as well as uh, practitioners in this in the field of lightning protection system so the, uh, in order to discuss uh, and interact with all the participants we have organized uh, we have taken up this issue that what uh, this kind of uh, this uh, non standard or sub standard a uh, type of lightning protection system or gadgets and what are the standards international standards and what are the uh, uh, demerits and what are the good things about all these gadgets that that are being uh, claimed by uh, various manufacturers and proponents of such uh, uh, products so today i have an honor to introduce in this uh, context to to take up the issue i have uh, an honor to introduce uh, professor dr g r nagabhushana uh, uh, it's my uh, i'm i'm very honored to have him here today because uh, he has uh, produced so many s- scholars uh, from the institute of uh, mysore and uh, a very very wonderful person who has uh, uh, wide knowledge of uh, on on lightning and high voltage uh, engineering so uh, uh, professor nagbhushana uh, he obtained his uh, uh, degree uh, uh, from from the university of uh, mysore right bsc degree uh, b uh, m b and phd from institute uh, indian institute of uh, science at uh, bengaluru Uh, and uh, from 1965 dr nagbhushana has been dealing with the various aspects of lightning and prote- uh, lightning protection from uh, protection against lightning of uh, transmission lines satellite launch pads at uh, isro uh, power equipment and insulation coordinate, uh, coordination uh, 1989 uh, a project was uh, awarded by da ADA Bengaluru for de- to design and fabrication and commissioning of a unique lightning testing test fa- facility having 4 million volts uh, impulse lightning voltage generator uh, and 200 to 200000 mps that means uh, to, uh, 200 kilo mps uh, to uh, 100 uh, m- uh, 100000 mps uh, and 200 mps impulse uh, lightning current generators uh, representing the worst lightning stroke for lightning uh, performance evaluation of light uh, combat uh, aircraft lca of ada uh, this uh, facility was uh, and uh, uh, even now 
being used under his uh, guidance to uh, evaluate the lightning performance of uh, light combat aircraft. aircraft. Uh, Hansa aircraft, other aircraft uh, and components of uh, HAL Bengaluru, uh, Hyderabad, uh, Lucknow, etc. I'm very much, apart from what uh, the small bio here, I, I know uh, quite well about uh, uh, Professor Nagabhushan that he has been uh, grooming uh, so many bright scholars uh, from from uh, the institute and uh, who are uh, rigorously working in the field of lightning production system and high voltage engineering. And it's uh, my pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Nagabhushan. Uh, I think uh, Professor Nagabhushan is uh, with us today. Thank Professor you very Nagabhushan. much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, my privilege to be uh, to to be with you today. Uh, and then so again, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, my 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 another honor, uh, Professor Muhammad Jainal Abdin uh, Abdul Qadir from Malaysia. He is the uh, one of the uh, one of the key figures in, in Southeast Asia uh, working on the lightning and high voltage research uh, rigorously um, for about two decades he has been working with lightning and uh, uh, of course he is the member of uh, IEEE IEC uh, and so and so I will uh, read out his uh, uh, his uh, bio briefly here so professor I, I hope professor Jainal is uh, with us today Professor Jainal? Yes, yes. Oh, um, thank, uh, thank you. Uh, welcome to the program. And uh, I'm very much honored to have you here today with the, with the mission that we have been um, organizing, conducting for several, um, I would say, about a couple of years now. So uh, Professor Jainal is uh, the, the uh, chair of Center for Electromagnetic and Lightning Protection Research, CELP, in Malaysia and Advanced Lightning Power and Engineering Research Center, ALPER, uh, a Faculty of Engineering, University Putra, Malaysia. Professor Jainal received his uh, B. Engineering and PhD degrees from University Putra, Malaysia and University of Manchester, uh, UK, respectively. He is a professor, uh, professional engineer, PEPC, a chartered engineer, CNG, and professional technologist P Tech. Uh, uh, P Tech. Professor Jainal is a fellow of Academy of Science Sciences Malaysia and fellow of the IET FIET uh, as well as uh, as well as an IEEE Power and uh, Energy uh, Society PES. Distinguished lecturer in the field of lightning and high voltage engineering. He has uh, authored and co-authored over 400 yes. journals and uh, conference uh, papers. Three, one, seven. Yeah, please. 792. He has, uh, sorry, I, I heard yeah. some noise, okay. He has uh, supervised over uh, 28 PhD and 42 MSc students. Uh, his research interests include high voltage engineering, lightning protections, protection system, electromagnetic uh, compatibility, power system transients, and renewable energy. Currently, he is the chairman of NMC, uh, of IEC. I, this is the technical committee, uh, 81, IEC 81, uh, which, is, which is working for lightning protection system. So it is the international, uh, I, 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 I hope all the audience here, participants here know about IEC. So. He is the member uh, and chairman of the NMC of IEC TC81, looking after the lightning protection system and local uh, convener of Seagre Malaysia um, uh, C14, sorry C4 on system technical performance. Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, what uh, uh, Professor Jainal is. Apart from this, uh, he is uh, he has been rigorously working. 
uh, to to implement uh, and endorse uh, lightning protection system as per the international standard IEC in Malaysia, and he has been one of the most success, successful leaders to to uh, have this implemented in Malaysia. And he would, I think, uh, today a brief uh, about what had happened, what was the story behind it. It is very interesting that how uh, he had to struggle with the with the you know uh, all these false uh, claims and so on uh, professor jainal you are most welcome and it's my privilege to be with you to, today thank you thank you thank you prof uh, yeah and uh, now i have uh, uh, an honor to uh, invite uh, mr gopa kumar one of the um, organizers of today's program but uh, apart from the organizing, uh, he has been rigorously working um, uh, for the lightning protection system and awareness raising throughout the India, not only uh, in the India, in India, but uh, in South Asian um, continent uh, itself. Like uh, he has been training uh, engineers in Sri Lanka, he has been training engineers in Nepal, Bangladesh, and so on. So. <clears throat> Uh, it's uh, I'm, I'm so much privileged today to have uh, Mr. Gopa Kumar uh, on this uh, program. Uh, so he he is the technical coordinator of Lightning Awareness and Research Center, LARC Trivandrum. He is an electrical engineer by profession and uh, the having having more than 27 years of experience in electrical safety, lightning production, and. EMI, electromagnetic uh, interference, uh, uh, electromagnetic compatibility of electrical installation, conducted hundreds of, he has conducted hundreds of site uh, studies on failure of electric, electronic equipment and presented papers in more than thousands uh, uh, seminars and uh, training programs globally. He has uh, published articles about uh, safety, um, safety of uh, in various uh, magazines and uh, uh, published the book, the mission, uh, missing link uh, in the in the subject of electrical safety. He is uh, a member in the uh, working groups uh, of IEC technical committee and a member of uh, a member in BIS committee uh, building uh, its uh, Indian standard. So uh, uh, apart from that. Uh, I, I, I personally know uh, Mr. Kumar was uh, in Nepal. Since I am from Nepal, uh, he was here for quite a few time uh, training uh, the electrical engineers of Nepal. And he is uh, one of the most popular and uh, liked person among the uh, engineers in Nepal. So it's my, I am very much privileged to have you here today, uh, Mr. Gopa Kumar. So I think you are uh, already there. Yes. So uh, to, as uh, we are all uh, aware of uh, today's uh, uh, discussion, uh, I would like to request uh, Mr. Gopa Kumar to uh, take over uh, the, the, to discuss about uh, the situation scenario currently uh, existing in India, because uh, you are much aware of these things, although I know a bit, but not too much. Uh, then, then we we can uh, discuss. We can invite uh, Professor Nagarjuna and uh, Professor Jainal to have a discussion on that, and then uh, we'll open the floor to the audience and uh, uh, participants and audience. Uh, I would like to request to put uh, your questions, queries in the chat box so that we can take up uh, those uh, queries in the discussion session. Uh, may I invite uh, Mr. Gopakumar to take over the? Yes. Uh Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sriram. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. I hope my screen is visible to all the participants. Uh, we are having a small problem in the chat. Uh, I think chat is not working for some of the people, but uh, uh, after the presentation, we will try to make it uh, set it right. Uh, so I hope uh, the presentation is visible to everybody. It is. Now, I will make a small uh, presentation, a small introduction about uh, what is CISA and what activity we are doing. And then I will go to the current, uh, the today's uh, uh, the subject. Uh, CISA is Center for Innovation in Science and Social Action. It's an NGO based out of Trivandrum. And uh, in the uh, last two weeks, uh, we have started a campaign called Vidit Surakshit Bharat Abhiyan for uh, electrical uh, safety. Uh, to improve the electrical safety situation in the country. Uh, 
now uh, uh, sorry a moment yeah Sita, we are a passionate group of enthusiastic scientists engineers medical practitioners and academicians uh, those who are working for uh, the uh, innovative ideas for a sustainable future we were conducting or arranging a lot of uh, programs uh, and sisa is also a uh, uh un university united nations university accredited center for excellence for education uh <clears throat> we have taken up uh, the electrical safety seminars or electrical safety classes uh, due to the fact that a lot of electrical accidents are uh, happening in india and uh, all of you are aware that uh, we used to see fire accidents from buildings and people are dying Uh, one of the reason for such accidents are the electrical safety measures are not very well followed in our country so this uh, slide is about uh, a, a study published by mr takashi honda from uh, japan about the electrical safety scenario uh, in the uh, uh, countries g20 countries uh, Uh, on the left side what you are seeing is uh, uh, the safety scenario uh, number of people those who are dying out of uh, uh, 100 million per year in india it's average 723 people die every year out of 100 million due to electric shock uh, you can also see the situation in the other countries such as uk uh, you know switzerland and japan and other countries of course they are very much developed but uh, 723 per year per 100 million is a big figure and out of the g20 nations uh, the safety score given to india is just 16 percentage so you can understand how bad our electrical installations are in this campaign we are taking up a few selective subjects so there are about uh, nine subjects which we are taking up one of the subject is uh, lightning protection as well but uh, mostly the the pro the trainings are on electrical safety what you should do to avoid uh, um, uh, the electrocution and fire from electricity uh, we have a group of uh, technical members uh, uh, mr appau mr james kutti thomas and mr vinay uh, nagdio they are from uh, they are retired from the electrical inspectorates uh, and mr patnaik from the orissa transmission and distribution company uh, mr devdas goswami Uh, he is uh, the consultant for uh, international copper association uh, mr nk mittal and uh, mr srinivas so they are uh, uh, electrical consultants so we have a group of people those who are uh, doing uh, uh, the technical members are consisting of a group of people and the program is also supported by several organizations such as uh, bis cea uh, railways uh, salnet uh, spark and uh, uh, you know like international copper association and all Uh, regarding sisa we were actively working uh, for electrical uh, sorry lightning safety since 2006 uh, mainly the technical part or mainly under the support from dr murali das and dr shashi kumar uh, we had started a center in uh, under sisa in trivandrum called as uh, lark lightning awareness and research center uh, under the guidance from uh, dr murali das and dr shashi kumar uh, the activities were carrying carried out uh, we started the activity in 2006 conducted hundreds of classes across india uh, dr nagabhushana dr chandima gomes uh, uh, they were also a part uh, of our uh, activities our uh, uh, training classes we traveled to several cities and uh, conducted several classes these were during 2006 2007 2008 and all already 15 years back we also prepared and circulated the uh, handouts uh, the uh, booklets for uh, mass awareness what exactly is lightning how it is affecting how you have to get uh, safe from uh, lightning so these booklets were published posters uh, thousands of posters were published mostly for schools and organizations Uh, and they, we also organized the programs where the uh, leading uh, uh, the the uh, politicians like uh, here in the picture what you are seeing is a program which we did in 2013 where the the then uh, uh, chief minister inaugurated the, the program 
so because of uh, this the involvement of uh, top uh, officials and uh, other people uh, popular people the uh, media was covering our programs in a uh, very good way uh, we also in 2014 and 15 we conducted a mass awareness class across uh, kerala for the school program and thanks to dr murli das uh, he was the one who was traveling uh, all over the uh, uh, the state and he was uh, taking classes uh, for school children as a result uh, uh, we, we have conducted uh, several uh, uh, trainings in this particular case uh in 2012 13 uh, there was a news uh, which uh, came in the newspaper last year uh, it's a news from the disaster state uh, disaster management uh, authority uh, of kerala state they said the 2012 13 average death was about uh, 72 uh, per year whereas in uh, 2013 to 2018 it has reduced drastically and 2019 uh, only four deaths uh, are happening annual uh, average annually average to our knowledge we were the only one those who were behind uh, Uh, creating such mass awareness programs in kerala now coming to the main subject of today's uh, program lightning protection you must be aware that uh, across india once when we go from uh, state to state uh, area to area the idea about lightning protection varies between people between common people this is a different uh, situation but the ideas between Uh, within the engineering community is uh, sometimes very low in some parts and sometimes it's uh, totally in a wrong direction in other parts of the country so first i will start with what exactly uh, the the uh, indian standard says uh, what is the lightning protection as per indian standard imagine a building i am showing the top view of a building uh, the roof of a building now the first part of uh, lightning protection is to create an air termination system an air termination system is intended to intercept the lightning in the sense the lightning instead of hitting the building it is supposed to hit uh, this particular air termination there are several uh, two three ways of uh, designing the air termination if you have a flat roof uh, what is recommended is a, a, a grid say for example 15 meter by 15 meter so there are also some more uh, uh, science behind it there is a lightning protection level risk assessment lightning protection level and those points are there which i am not going to explain but in a simple building flat roof you have to make a, 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 a mesh at the top of the building and if there are protruded items if uh, roof mounted uh, electrical or some kind of appliances or some kind of uh, materials are there such as uh, let us say solar pv and uh, an air conditioner chiller unit in this case these uh, protruded uh, electrical appliances require additional protection such as a rod within the angle the rod protects uh, against direct lightning strike on these uh, uh, electrical appliances and in addition we have to make equipotential bonding equipotential bonding in the sense the mesh and the metal parts of these electrical apparatuses are interconnected this is the normal way of doing air termination now for air termination uh, designing positioning of the rod we also uh, have the electro geometric sphere principle uh, rolling sphere method and electro geometric sphere principle which is followed across the globe for several years especially if we look at all our transmission lines distribution transmission lines the lightning protection of transmission lines uh, uh, millions of kilometers of transmission lines across the globe are designed with this particular principle rolling sphere electro geometric modeling the second part of lightning protection is the down conductor let us say in this typical example there are 10 down conductors uh multiple number of down conductors are necessary because uh, we need to uh, uh, see that uh, the lightning current is divided through different paths as a result uh, um, Oh, I have. A, I can see a comment. Please sync the slide with presenter to say, see the slide. Uh, I have a question, uh, Mr. Vignesh. Uh, my speech and the slide are they not syncing? Can you just uh, switch on your mic and uh, give me an answer? No, it is. It no, it's, it's working, sir. It's working. Okay, thanks. It's working, but uh, many are saying that they cannot see see the slide. Uh, Will will it be better uh, to do it uh, 
like from your system itself, like sharing screen? Yes, one moment. One moment. Yeah, I hope now it's better. Now you are able to see. Yeah, now, now yes. for me it is. Yeah, so now the second part, as I said, it is the down conductor. Uh, lot of down conductors, number of down conductors are required uh, because the total lightning current shall be divided through different paths in order to reduce the effect of uh, the lightning current. Uh, then uh, at the building, we need to have uh, equipotential bonding. That means the down conductor and the electrical installation bus bars, earth bus bar shall be interconnected, equipotential bonding. And on the power lines uh, and data lines, the service lines which is coming into the building also shall have surge protective devices. And uh, every down conductor uh, should have uh, an earth electrode. So the calculations are given in the standard, how to design the earth electrode and so on. And in modern buildings, uh, the easiest way uh, is to make a foundation earthing. That means the structural steel, the steel reinforcement the inside the building can be used as the earth electrode. So this is how uh, the uh, lightning protection system is designed according to the IS IEC 62305. Now, uh, another important subject of this particular design is called as the electrical separation. Electrical separation in the sense uh, uh, once when the lightning current flows through some of the conductive parts, uh, there is a chance that the nearby metallic parts could be danger because of a spark over. As a result, uh, we are supposed to measure the separation distance and the electrical apparatuses shall be kept a little bit away from the down conductor, say for example. Now, I am showing you a typical example uh, with the calculation. Let us say, just as an example, one meter is the distance between the uh, air terminal and uh, the metallic parts. So what does it mean is, uh, the you have the building here and uh, this red color is the air terminal, uh, air termination and down conductor and the S stands for the separation distance. Uh, uh, in order to avoid the spark over between, flash over between different objects, uh, down conductors shall be at least, uh, example, one meter away from the frame of the structural steel, electrical wiring, rebar, metal doors, metal windows and so on. So this is also an important subject uh, which need to be considered in case of lightning protection system. And uh, uh, here uh, the exposed, uh, uh, the, the in modern buildings, uh, natural down conductors, natural down conductor means the rebar by a little bit of modification. The, the steel rebar itself is used as down conductor. As a result, the separation distance we are supposed to avoid, we need not have to calculate the separation distance in modern building. And the recommended practice for high-rise buildings are to use uh, the, the, uh, the steel rebar or the natural components uh, for the purpose of lightning protection. So this is, the, uh, I would say, a small introduction about what exactly is the Indian standard says. The Indian standard says there shall be a grid at the top, there is uh, may probably some few rods depending upon your uh, roof. Then there are several down conductors. There is an earthing system and you have to make an equipotential bonding system. You have to have SPDs and so on. This is a very well uh, designed uh, lightning protection system. Now, what exactly ESC says? ESC in India. Let me say ESC in India. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, ESE sometimes used in uh, other countries are a little bit different than what we do in, in India. So ESE in India, it consists of, uh, imagine a high-rise building. At the top of the building, there is an attractive rod. So even from a little bit far away, you will be able to see the rod. It's a, there is an attractive rod. Then there is a down conductor. Normally, a 70 square millimeters copper flexible insulated conductor. Why insulated conductor? Because people say because of the insulation, the current will go through the, uh, through the conductor without damaging the nearby things. So insulated down conductors are used. Uh, and there is one earth pit. 
So mostly the promoters of such system, they say, this is a very simple system. One rod, one down conductor and one earth, all your problems are gone. Also for industrial installation, imagine there is a large industry at the top of the building. There is a rod, there is a down conductor and there is an earth electrode. And the danger again here is the high rise buildings, down conductors are always routed through some shaft especially electrical shaft. Along with the electrical wiring, the down conductors are also running. One of the classic example is my own building. I live in an apartment, uh, totally there are about 28 uh, floors, about 120 meter height building. Uh, the down, there is an ESC rod at the top, the builder has provided it and then the down conductor, uh, it is taken through the electrical shaft with a lot of bends. Now, what is the claim of these people? They say, you have a building. At the top of the building, you put a, a rod. Now, this rod is able to cover, it is able to attract the lightning up to a distance of 100 meter or 110 meter. That means you will protect not only your building, you will protect all your neighbors and if possible, uh, you know, the nearby buildings as well. And then they always say, this is a new technology. By listening to the word a new technology, people will get an impression that, aha, that means the, the whatever explained in the Indian standard is an older technology. That is absolutely wrong. This ESE is not new. It is there existing since uh, 1980s. It's already uh, 40 years. The arguments and the claims and all these uh, uh, advanced things are going on for the last 40 years. It is so new technology, this claim is wrong. Then the ESC supporters always say, this is uh, ESC is an advanced technology, active technology, modern technology, simple technology, and this has got less maintenance, and they, they you know, a lot of marketing words are used, and the claim is it protects up to 100 meters. So as a result, uh, people are very much attracted, uh -huh, 100 meters, 100 plus meters, it will protect, and then there is a counter, so whenever there is a lightning uh, a strike in your building, the counter keep on counting the number of strikes. And you can look at the counter, uh, say for example, counted the 10, there is no failure in your building and you can be happy. Then the fourth and the important point is, this is accepted in the French standard. There is a French standard, NFC 17102, and the ESE supporters claim that the French standard accepted this technology. French people are also intelligent people. They are not fools. They are also intelligent people. And if a French uh, standard accepts this technology, what is the problem in India to accept early streamer emission? This is the biggest argument which we face every day. So let us uh, try to analyze what exactly the French standard says. The French standard. Of course, the French standard is in French language, which uh, we are unable to read. So we have, uh, I am looking at the translation from the UTE, uh, that is, I think, the Spanish uh, Standards Organization. There is an English translation available. Even if you Google, uh, you will be able to download this particular uh, standard. So I have made this picture in a color graphics. Now, this is the picture, how to install an ESE rod explained in the early streamer emission standard, which is the French standard. Remember, worldwide, there is only one standard which accepted early streamer emission, which is the French standard. From the French standard, other countries also adopted it, like Spain, Portugal, and all the nearby countries. Now, this picture is the explanation how to install a lightning ESC rod in a building. It consists of one or more air terminal. This air terminal is the ESC rod. Connecting components, down conductors. Remember, there are two down conductors, whereas in India, we always talk about one down conductor. Test joints, earth electrodes, foundation earth electrode. Foundation earth, in the sense, the earth electrode is connected back to the foundation uh, of this particular building. Then you have the electric power cables coming inside. You have uh, electric uh, power distribution board. You have the telecommunication power distribution board. You have uh, uh, one or more equipotential bonding bars. 
you look at this particular picture very carefully the down conductor is also connected to the bus bar the down conductor is also connected to the earthing of this particular electrical appliance the down conductor is also connected to other part the down conductor is also connected to some electrical appliance at the top this is not my picture this is the picture from the french standard the only available standard in the world about esc so if we analyze this particular picture and if we read and go through this particular picture very carefully actually the standard is talking about a lightning protection system similar to what is written in the indian standard but the only difference is this particular thing the item number 1 is the only difference between the french standard and the indian standard indian standard explains all the other uh, matters like you have to have multiple down conductors you have to have uh, uh, equipotential bonding and all those things are there so the question is what exactly is this in india this is not the way people are educating people are educating totally in a different way you put one rod the rod protects 100 meters you take a 70 square millimeter wire and put it on the earth bit so all the energy from the lightning will go through this insulated conductor without destroying any or disturbing any of your other appliances and it goes to the earth this is what people educate in india but this is uh, whatever you are seeing in this uh, picture is the explanation from the french standard now let us go into deep the french standard again the french standard also says if you have a high rise building then the high rise building you have to have uh, uh, you have to have you know uh, the additional protection against direct lightning strike for the height of 20 percentage of the structure more than 60 meter so that means tall high rise buildings more than uh, this uh, the, the top 20 percentage has to have uh, or any other means must be implemented uh, at each facade if you have facade at this building according to a valid standard actually this is a very clever uh, wording the only valid standard is the is iec 62305 or the iec 62305 what uh, Uh, nfc standard says is for high rise building you make a equipotential bonding or you make a, a connection according to a valid standard which is the iec standard furthermore a minimum of four down conductors interconnected by a ring conductor when applicable shall be used unfortunately these are not done in india now again go back the standard protection level 1 plus that means the esc rod is additionally connected to the metal structure or reinforced bar of the building used as a natural down conductor in addition to the dedicated down conductor included in the system this part says if you wanted to increase the efficiency of your system you have to connect your down conductor also to the structural steel that means you use the natural component which i have explained in one of the previous slides whatever explained in the iec and the is standards they are repeating now level of protection i plus plus the roof is protected level 1 plus with an is at uh, having a radius of protection reduced by 40 percentage so these are the explanations in the standard similarly another subject explained in the french standard is the subject called electrical insulation of or separation distance i explained what is explained in the indian standard in the previous slide now the same calculation is also repeating in the french standard so your electrical appliance and your down conductor system or your esc system has to have certain separation distance say for example here you have the early steamer emission device s1 is the separation device separation distance between the electrical installation and the down conductor s2 another separation distance s3 another separation distance so exactly what is there in iec standard is explained in this particular french standard now you see here this is the explanation of the uh, uh, the separation distance now is the french standard explains in this fashion which you are seeing in the picture not only the french standard the french spain portugal and all the countries those who have adopted this particular esc uh, rods 
they are explaining that this is the way you should do a lightning protection system in your building whereas when it comes to india the system is totally wrong totally different people say you have a rod a simple rod advanced modern rod it attracts lightning from 100 meters and send it to ground without disturbing your uh, uh, building so ese in india generally basically it follows a nice story when you listen to the story it looks very good aha uh-huh, 100 meters so this advanced the rod attracts lightning up to 100 meters and sent it to soil and this is the uh, the story which is uh, uh, explained in india one rod one down conductor and one earth pit the question is indian ese vendors don't know about french standard i think none of these vendors so far in the last 40 years none of the uh, the ese vendors in india it looks like they didn't read the standard properly because so far i have not seen any ese vendor in india who has explained the correct way to a client they always say that you have one rod one down conductor and one earth thing or one earth pit so don't they know they don't know about the french standard is the question then why are they making false claim about the ese rods installed in india they say that the ese rod in india this as per these two pictures they are as per the nfc standard which is absolutely wrong why are they making false claims this is a natural question as an engineer we have to be uh, take care we have to take care of the installation as per the standard whatever the standard written we are supposed to follow whereas these people are not at all following the standard and they are coming out with a nice story now what is this ese and uh, what do we mean by ese's efficiency when we compare a normal rod and a normal franklin rod or the, the system explained in isic 62305 and the ese rod people say ese is advanced modern so it can attract so much lightning this comparison the efficiency of a lightning rod i am not going much into the physics uh, part of this the science part of this particular subject because that particular the science part is not an engineer's job it is the job of a scientist so its efficiency shall be accepted by the scientist the scientific community what the ese people say is the ese proponents uh, supporters say is there is a normal rod in your building and this rod is emitting streamers into the cloud or towards the cloud these are emitting streamers whenever a downward leader comes from the cloud the ese rod is emitting streamers uh, the normal rod is emitting streamers in comparison this blue line is the streamer see in comparison in compared to a normal rod the early streamer emission rod is very much fast it is faster than a normal rod as a result within the same time the ese rod is able to send uh, the streamer to a longer distance and this longer distance they say even though the rod is 1 meter height the because of its advanced efficiency this uh, effective height of this particular rod is delta t into 10 to the power of 6 whereas this delta t is the time advancement or the time difference between the emission happening in a normal rod and in an ese rod actually once when we go into the science behind it this is a crooked science so the effective height is converted to radius based on some complex formulas now scientists across the globe not only one or two scientists almost all scientists those who are doing uh, research on uh, lightning physics and uh, the lightning uh, protection method they have not accepted this theory the arguments are delta t that means the uh, i have a slide which i will explain you later what is this delta t then the speed of the early streamer the 10 to the power of 6 uh, because nowadays uh, there were some uh, reports which they say that uh, with the high speed uh, latest modern cameras uh, people made some research and the uh, the speed of this uh, is not 10 to the power of 6 it, it is uh, sometime 10 to the power of 4 or 10 to the power of 5 then these formulas given by the given in the french standard these three points the delta t 10 to the power of 6 and this particular calculation are so far unproven because once when somebody says that i have a new formula then it is the responsibility of the 
pro, of the person to show that his formula is correct until now the esc vendors are unable to prove this particular formula so what do they do with respect to the testing delta t how do they find out the delta t imagine you have a laboratory and in the laboratory uh, first is uh, you 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 test a single rod air terminal that means a normal uh, iron rod uh, maybe 1 meter height of the iron rod and then at the top there is a plate at the bottom there is a, again another plate between these two plates a charge is created once when the charge once when the voltage is uh, going beyond a certain limit there is a breakdown happens so they make a breakdown and the time of this particular device the time with which this particular device is emitting some uh, some some kind of uh, early streamers are uh, taken and this is called as the time of the single rod air terminal then they connect an early streamer emission device the same time is the eac time is also taken the difference between the normal rod and the early streamer emission rod is taken as delta t the time advancement uh, of this particular uh, the esc rod actually this theory nobody understood so far the second part as i said from this delta t you have the complex formula and out of this complex formula one of the point is this this the the uh, delta in meters how much is the effective height delta t into 10 to the power of 6 this is also a complex uh, uh, formula now what scientists did they made a similar they, they, there are hundreds thousands of people those who are making research on this subject trying to find out trying to evaluate whether these claims are correct or not i am just showing you one example i don't think that this is the only example there are several examples because of the time i am only just ex, ex, uh, showing you an example so we have uh, in the laboratory there is a plate and there is uh, the same setup is created this uh, a uh, purple color is a normal iron rod uh, let us say uh, 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 iron rod in the sense uh, the iron rod from the construction steel uh, the tmt rod say for example and then you have a esc rod so what scientists did they connected an iron rod and an esc rod and if the theory if the claim of esc vendors are correct if the esc is more efficient and if you put uh, 100 strikes out of 100 all the 100 strikes should go to the esc rod so they made the charge they did the testing and finally the result is if the theory is correct the iron rod and est uh, are tested simultaneously all strikes should go to the early streamer emission air termination but it is not so it's about 50 50 in some cases esc will have 60 the normal rod will have 40 in another case sometime normal rod have 70 and the esc has 30 so there is uh, the, the claim of the esc rod uh, companies are absolutely wrong this is one of the way which is uh, proven uh, there are several research papers available in the internet uh, if you look at our chat box you will be able to see all these papers we have uploaded in the chat box you can download all these uh, technical papers a lot of technical papers are uh, uploaded then as a result the scientific community didn't accept these arguments especially the delta t the 10 to the power of 6 and the protection radius as a result esc is not accepted in any of the recognized international standards such as ic ieee nfpa vde bs and or whatever even in france the actual french standard is 62305 in france uh, the nfc en62305 is the actual lpa standard esc is used without violating 62305 so if you look at uh, the previous picture esc is used without violating 62305 in the sense they use the word coexist coexist in the sense you have a very good uh, guard which is the 62305 the norm, the conventional or the the lightning protection as per the iec standard in addition to the protection they make one more rod that means uh, uh, they the word which they say is uh, uh, coexist esc is coexisting with uh, uh, iec uh, lightning protection system what do they say is uh, you make a lightning protection as per the 62305 standard and then you put an esc in addition of course if you have money you can do that whereas when it comes to india 
the situation is totally different we are not talking about the testing which is recommended in the iec standard we always talk about a testing from the cpri what i am showing you is an email correspondence between a consultancy a large consultancy company and to uh, some of the government organizations remember government organizations so, so uh, the lightning uh, find out the esc lightning arrester provided for gujarat the mpcs this is a, a multi purpose cyclone shelter that means it's a government project in a government project this esc is used and he is explaining how this is installed to another officer and now point number 2 EAC Lightning Arrester CPRI Test Certificate, the Government of India Society approved by Lab Ministry Power India. So that means the people, uh, uh, the, uh, this this gentleman says that the EAC rod is tested in a CPRI lab. So as an Indian, we have to accept. We generally think, aha, uh -huh, this is tested in CPRI. Then what is the problem? Let us look at the, what exactly the test conducted in CPRI. The actual test which is recommended in the ESC standard, you are very well aware, that is the delta T. That means how much efficient it is. That is a totally a different uh, test. Whereas in India, there is a surge current generator. There are two generators. One is 40 kilo ampere and one is 70 kilo ampere. The generators are connected directly to the ESC rod and uh, maybe three pulse, four pulse, five pulse, two negative, one positive, two positive, two negative. Like the few pulses are given. And finally, uh, the CPRI gives a certificate. And uh, you must understand that this is not a test made from a standard. This is a customer specific test, customer specific test. Instead of this ESE rod, if I have an iron rod and if I go to uh, CPRA and say that, look, I have an iron rod, uh, can you test it for 40 kilo ampere? Of course, they will, if I pay the money, they have to test or they will test because this is a customer specific requirement. Now, this same test which is conducted in uh, CPRA also can be done with an 8 millimeter thick TMT rod. All of you knows what is TMT rod. A TMT rod is the iron rod which is used in the construction steel. The same test which is conducted uh, for the ESE uh, in the CPRI, it can be conducted uh, in an 8 millimeter TMT rod and the TMT rod will also pass the test. Does it mean that the ESE rod is equal to a TMT rod? So if people accept the uh, test report from CPRI as an authentic uh, uh, paper, for accepting the ESE rod, I would say tomorrow I will come out, I will uh, go to CPRI, make a test with a TMT rod and you should accept my TMT rod as well, equal to ESE rod. This is the argument because whatever explained in ESE and whatever tested in CPRI, these are totally no relation between these two. Then what is the business behind it? Look at this. This is a tender in Maharashtra. 45 crores, not one or two rupees, 45 crores rupees worth uh, uh, ESE rods are being, they are going to install it in panchayats, hospitals, schools and all. Schools, what is the, uh, look at the situation of the children. This is by the government. So the question to the government authorities are, look, we are a nation, we have our national standard. Why don't you respect our national standard? And if you have any problem with the national standard, you can write back to the authority and you have to ask them to change. So we don't respect our standard and we go as per whatever we wish. This one, I got the video yesterday. You are aware that uh, last week there was a lightning strike in uh, Rajasthan, in Amar Fort. Initially, the report says 11 people passed away and then uh, there were some reports saying 16 people. I'm not sure whether it is 11 or 16. But anyway, yesterday, Aaj Tak made a news. This is from the news. I can send you the link if you require. So what you are seeing is an ESC rod installed in Amer Fort. So if the claim of the ESC is correct, why do people die? You should think about it. But the news had come in a different way. The news says only one rod is uh, used in another fort instead of one. If you make 10 rods, the entire fort is protected. This is what the news says. But uh, as an engineer, we should think that, okay, there is one rod. Then what happened to that particular rod? And this is supposed to protect uh, hundreds of meters. What happened to those hundreds of meters? Nothing happened. People died. 
air termination system now ESC and national building code the national building code of india in 2016 uh, had written not to use uh, non standard lightning protection system it was very clearly written i will just explain you uh, the background why this has come i was a member in this particular committee so the draft of the standard has come in this fashion i am showing you the draft of the standard all these documents are public uh, these are not secret documents you can also find it out in the internet uh, air termination system the draft says early streamer emission uh, air terminal shall not be allowed any other kind of air terminal if used the area within the angle of protection as per table 4 of the practice shall be considered as protected zone so in indirectly what it says is you if you have a rod for uh, lightning protection we have we are supposed to uh, protect or we are supposed to consider that the the area within the angle of protection is the protected place so what it says is even if you use an ESC rod you should consider the angle of protection and use it this is what the uh, the recommendation this is what is in the draft but once when the draft is published for public comments uh, anybody can comment so as a result there were uh, you know thousands of comments and uh, specifically regarding this particular subject uh, the the there is a, this this document is available you can download it and you can see it uh, one of the largest esc manufacturer in the world the company name i'm sorry you can you can read the company name they made a comment the comment this detail which i have highlighted in the previous one details should be more specifically explained to avoid any confusion and what they recommended is modified word any other kind of air terminal like early streamer dissipation system controlled early streamer emitter as per nfc 17102 if used shall be considered as a normal conductor so he is trying to make it more specifically he says if these esc and other things as per the french standard is used then you have to be very specific it has to be considered as a normal rod only this is what he has written and his comment i triply also discourage the use of this system under clause 7.3 now this comment once when this comment was analyzed by the committee members then uh, there were you know lot of discussion big discussions went on and finally the conclusion is who is this company who has made this comment they are the world's largest manufacturer and what do they written they are writing that the only available standard in the world is wrong because if you read this it's very clear they say the only available don't use as per this uh, uh, this uh, Uh, standard this is what they have written so the world's largest manufacturer says that the world's only available standard is wrong so what do the committee do the committee said okay any accept his wording and remove the standard which he has put so the committee accepted and his uh, uh, the recommendation from this uh, world's largest esc manufacturer and put us any other kind of look at the wording eh? the wording itself came from the recommendation of the esc manufacturer any other kind of air terminal like dissipation system esc air terminal csc air terminal shall not be acceptable so one word the whole problem is gone so this is the background behind the, the uh, national building code whatever written in the national building code is perfectly correct because the vendors in india esc vendors in india anyhow they are not even following the french code anyway let us go to the next part now this is so far i was explaining about the uh, the the protection of uh, of uh, uh, a building or a factory or uh, some kind of a structure but there is a big propaganda going across india which is more dangerous than the esc rod esc rod if somebody installed it uh, in case of a lightning hit his building is uh, uh, will catch fire or destroyed that is his personal problem but now we go to a public problem a serious problem in propaganda in india is we have protected the whole city protected lightning protection protected cities lightning protected villages and one esc rod protected up to 1 square kilometer the esc vendor says it's only 110 uh, meter but uh, the supporters say uh, like the leader says 1 uh, uh, and the supporters say 10 
So the ESC vendor says 100 meter and the supporters say one square mil kilometer, one rod protect one square kilometer. What you are seeing in the picture is an ESC rod installed in a farm or in, a, in an near to an agriculture farm. In open area, this ESC rod is installed. Now you can see uh, there is a tree. And uh, tr uh, after one year, once when the tree grows, what will happen? The standard, the French standard explains how to calculate the uh, radius. It is 100 meter, but it is not always 100 meter. There are some calculations behind it. And now if we apply these calculations uh, with the installation, which is, uh, uh, which is in the picture, you can be 100% sure that uh, what this, uh, uh, the supplier did is really nonsense. So NFC, this particular uh, uh, clause, it explains about the, uh, the protected area. The protected area is uh, always uh, something plus or minus 110 meters. Uh, but uh, the proponents, the, the supporters say each rod can protect up to 1.1 to 1.5 square kilometers. And you must understand that uh, uh, even in the documents of the ESC standard, these are uh, not correct. Then again, the supporters, what they say? There are two technologies available. One is called as the lightning conductor. Lightning conductor is as per the Indian standard or as per uh, the, uh, the, the National Building Code of India. It conducts the lightning. Very simple. So, lightning conductor. Then, the second one is called as early streamer emission, which is called as a lightning arrester. So, the first one is lightning conductor and the second one is lightning arrester. So, one lightning arrester protect up to one square kilometer actually there are videos uh, available in the youtube sometimes the manufacturer sometimes the supporter says 1.5 kilo square kilometer sometimes they say one square kilometer we have to really ask them uh, you you fix this value don't try to change it every time if it is one kilometer fix it to one kilometer then we can have a discussion so they claim up to one, one to 1 1.5 square kilometer and then they say yes is modern advanced the new technology and all the uh, the fancy words are used and the last part please look at it there is no sound and no light in ESC rod what they say is this rod will will do something as a result uh, lightning sound and light itself will disappear to be honest most of my friends those who are in the lightning protection uh, uh, field uh, when we discuss uh, they are uh, uh, this is this is a real surprise what kind of uh, uh, theory are you proposing? Then the second, the, the, the next uh, points of these manufacturers are ESC is installed in Eiffel Tower, then Burj Khalifa. Uh, the performance of ESC is very good because it is installed in uh, Parliament of India. Kuttap Minar, uh, this is installed. So these are the signs of uh, good performance because Parliament of India is protected. And in Kuttap Minar, ESC rod, there is an ear thing. Uh, there is a counter in uh, in Kuttap Minar which counted, I think, up to 10-15 strikes. Uh, I remember it is something about 25 strikes. The counter has counted 25 lightning strikes in this uh, uh, lightning arrestor or this ESC rod. That means 25 times uh, lightning has struck this, uh, the counter counted and uh, nothing happened to the building. That is the claim. But unfortunately, uh, if you take one of this counter and shake it very well, then it will start counting. If you shake it two times, it will count sometime 20. So even without lightning, these counters are counting. That is another uh, funny thing. Anyway, that is not our uh, subject. And then the claim in Kuttap Minar, everything is done in a well. So you have a large well and uh, you, have, you have put uh, some big plate into a well uh, for uh, 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 you know dissipating the current. And uh, another uh, uh, one video which I have listened recently, it was very interesting, very funny. Uh, one vendor, ESC vendor, says that he has worked in uh, in in, in uh, Germany, France, uh, Japan, and other countries, and in Switzerland for a telecommunication installation, they have installed ESC. And in Switzerland, it is full of ice, uh, so getting a resistance of uh, a lesser value is very low. So they use a cow dung in Switzerland for earthing. So in order to get eight ohms of resistance, cow dung is used in uh, Switzerland. Actually, what kind of <laughs> If, if we really go into their wording, we won't be able to understand what they are talking. It's really in a, a pathetic situation. This is the, the slide. Lightning arresters are devices which arrest the lightning before it is formed and hence there is no 
light and sound. There is no sound and light. This is a very special statement for India. But uh, I should ask uh, my question to these vendors are what kind of device is this? And you see these devices are installed, the claims, these are installed in, uh, I don't remember, I don't know what exactly is this, JSCA Stadium in Ranchi. So the people, those who are watching cricket uh, in this particular stadium, please be very careful. If there is a lightning, please don't go to the uh, stadium because there is an ES around installed. Now, the other theories, the new wordings, which we never heard of, like uh, hill lightning, jungle lightning, river-based lightning, coastal lightning, urban lightning, semi-urban lightning, carpet lightning. There are several words which, unfortunately, most of the people in the lightning uh, uh, protection field never heard of. So those attractive words are used during uh, the trainings. Kerala is having coastal lightning throughout the year. This is uh, somebody had made a, uh, made, a, made a statement that I made a research and my result is Kerala is having coastal lightning throughout the year. And you see here one of the presentation sound low VHF 1 to 30 megahertz. Sound low VHF 1 to 30 megahertz. Are they engineers or what kind of people are they? Because in our schools we studied very well that the maximum... Uh, the sound is between 20 to 20 kilohertz. But what kind of sound is this? <laughs> Up to 30 megahertz. Now, vertical and lateral strike. Vertical strike, uh, lateral strike is having 10 percentage current of uh, vertical strike. In farmlands, especially in Bihar, uh, the, the land is very open. Lateral strike will uh, travel several uh, uh, kilometers and it, it is killing people. So, lateral strikes are very uh, danger. Then they say, uh, if you plant tall trees around your house, the trees will dissipate uh, lightning. And then the next claim, a compound wall. If you have uh, a compound wall around your building, uh, the lightning will not, the, the, the lateral strike will not travel through the soil, so people are protected. So in your house, if you put a, a, a rod or if you, if, you, if you plant a tall tree, because the tree dissipate the lightning, and uh, around the tree, uh, if you put a compound wall, the problem of lighting is gone if we follow the, their, uh, this particular theory. Basically, my question is, what kind of science are we talking? We are a nation with a lot of, uh, uh, from, from ancient days onwards, we have a lot of uh, scientists and we have a lot of uh, engineers, world-renowned engineers. And now we are making a proposal of something uh, like a, a nonsense. And this is how the, the trainings are happening in India. Look, school children are educated with these theories. 30 megahertz sound. What kind of sound is this? And the vertical strike and the lateral strike. Jungle, uh, jungle lightning, uh, river based lightning and all these things. The lateral strikes are fatal in open space agriculture fields. Example, recent death in Bihar. So the explanation is lightning is coming like the water coming from the cloud. Once when it touches the ground, it splashes. So lateral strike is like a splashing of water. So it flows a larger area and it kills people. Now, these supporters are also making a new and a dangerous system a more dangerous uh, situation of course educating children on this uh, wrong uh, science is of course it is a big danger but more than that is another more bigger uh, problem dangerous installation supported and funded by government agencies i repeat government agencies you can see a building somewhere probably in in the eastern part of india now in the building you can see a wooden pole and uh, something at the top the item at the top is a cycle rim. Cycle rim is the cycle tire frame. So there is a wooden pole and a cycle tire frame. Now look, the wooden pole and the cycle tire frame. And this is called as a lightning protection system. Uh, 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 lightning protection for village. Lightning arrester for village. Village lightning protection system. Or some, some modern names they were uh, calling on this. Such non-standard and unheard systems are uh, proposed for people in order to save these children say for example there are children in a school and imagine what will happen in case of a lightning strike in this uh, wooden pole 
now they say this is a, a, a new technology made out of commonly available goods uh, out of a bicycle tire rim and the components of this lighting production are a cycle rim a wooden pole and a metal wire few of them can save the entire village remember the initial propaganda is if you put uh, let us say five six numbers your entire village is lightning protected this was the claim uh, uh, which was originally came and these these uh, 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 cycle rim lightning protection systems are supported by reputed organizations and ngos they are they are funded and they are installing these uh, kind of uh, lightning protection system and once when we told uh, once when we made uh, an argument a uh, few months back two months back that uh, this is uh, this uh, uh, this uh, cycle tire cannot protect kilometers and it cannot protect uh, panchayat and villages then they proposed uh, the the same uh, people they have proposed a new system the in the new system instead of a cycle rim they have proposed uh, a gi pipe and then there is a 0.5 meter long aluminum air terminal some down conductor and some earthing system now you read at the uh, earthing system gi ms pipe earthing low cost but short life so that means after 2 years the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, earthing is gone will it work let us analyze this rod as per the theory which is shown in the previous slide if we take a level 1 protection protects up to a 13 meter pole 47 degrees so what i am showing in this dotted line this is approximately the Uh, the area which is uh, protected now uh, the iec 62713 uh, says in case of uh, uh, a, a, a lightning strike in some kind of an object you have to be 10 meters away from the uh, uh, from the tree for example now you have a rod and if you wanted to be safer first is you have to be 10 meters away from this particular pole so first 10 meter is gone consider the earthing system is a ms pipe and it 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 corrode after some time so first is you have to be 10 meter away from uh, this particular pole now at the edge the last uh, place because of the height of the person of course there is a chance of a direct lightning strike so you cannot go to the edge then finally you get a protected area which is about 1.5 meter so in if we look uh, from the actual view so this is the rod the orange color is the claimed protected area first 10 meters you cannot go because of the step potential then you have about 1.5 meter which is actually protected the last orange place you cannot use because you will get a direct hit so if these systems are installed people during lightning people should run towards this particular rod then they have to find out where is this 1.5 meter and stand on this 1.5 meter if you go closer there is a problem so such dangerous uh, systems are proposed uh, across india another case cyclone shelter in orissa this is the tender document a uh, cyclone shelter i have a picture i will show you it's a normal rcc building probably the height of the building is 7 to 8 meters or or maybe 10 meter normal rcc building you have to understand that people inside an rcc structure are protected people inside a substantial building are protected provided the uh, metallic plumbing system and the metallic power lines are uh, connected to the equipotential bonding system so lighting protection air termination down conductor and earthing is required for this particular building not to protect the people it is to protect the building itself so now what is done here somebody made a beautiful proposal there is an insulated pole the air termination mesh is running on the insulated pole the down conductors are hvi isolated air termination hvi means some kind of a special down conductor and this particular down conductor for example it is a copper wire 35 mm square high voltage cable the cost of this cable uh, is about 3500 rupees per meter so this kind of a lightning protection system is proposed in the uh, state of orissa and uh, i think several hundreds of uh, uh, cyclone shelters are protected with these kind of uh, things the question is what are we doing who proposed this you are building even without uh, air termination probably the people are protected 
and this kind of an isolated protection is required uh, let us say for example a defense installation where missiles are uh, protected or missiles are uh, kept inside the building very special cases you need to have this kind of an very expensive uh, uh, isolated lightning protection system but somebody i'm sure uh, some european manufacturer very cleverly put uh, these uh, uh, unwanted things as a result uh, there was a, a big tender uh, it is a cyclone shelter if we make a risk assessment probably no lightning protection probably is required for this building even if it is required probably the lightning protection level 4 the drawing looks like lps for a high security explosive storage building in terms uh, the terms used looks like the products from europe are selected uh, the uh, it is an international funded project the estimate i am sure it is between 15 to 20 crores how do i calculate the estimate because the Totally, about 30,000 meters of this special cable is used in this uh, tender, each costing about 3,500 rupees per meter. The cost of the cable itself is about 10 crores. So if the cost of the cable is 10 crores, all the other items together is at least double, so 20 crores average. And after two years, the installation looks really funny. This is the cyclone shelter, the cyclone shelter. Isolated air termination. And uh, you look at this on the left side, there is a uh, there is a pipe, and through this pipe, this special uh, down conductor is running. It is uh, an established fact that down conductors must be fixed to the building very strongly. You cannot hang it loose because the mechanical forces created by the lightning is very, very heavy. If you if your fixing is not proper, then uh, it could create a, an explosion. So you are supposed to fix it very firmly, whereas this down conductor is hanging through a pipe. Next, the down conductor, the very expensive per meter, 3,500 rupees, this conductor is hanging through the pipe. And it is, it is hanging on the side of the building. What kind of installation it is? Number one, this building is, this protection itself is not required. You have provided a protection. Of course, probably uh, the people are protected. But how these are installed? These are, I'm not showing the installation of a 10 years old uh, picture. This is very recent. It is installed, I think, only two years back. The entire thing is destroyed within two years. So this is the fact about, uh, these are the facts about the lightning protection stories going on in India. Now let us, uh, I will uh, try to cut short it. Uh, what exactly is required for uh, protecting rural places? The most important is uh, step potential. In order to avoid step potential, the conductor which is buried in the soil shall be uh, uh, buried across or around the building as a ring conductor. Ring conductor limits the uh, potential difference and this is uh, much more better the best way of protection is uh, a container but of course container is very expensive uh, you cannot put containers uh, at several places and ask people to sit inside it uh, during a lightning strike this is uh, very uh, risky uh, one of the proposal is instead of a container probably uh, at the half of the cost of a container a metal shed can be uh, made but don't uh, try to make a metal shed from tomorrow onwards. You have to properly engineer it. I'm just putting an idea. Uh, and uh, another important point is you need to have uh, ring conductors around the building because uh, one of the idea is to protect people, those who are outside the building or people, those who are coming towards the building from step potential. So this is one idea. Probably the all the four sides of the building can be covered with metal sheet. As a result, uh, you achieve uh, the particular safety. And this is how the, the ring conductor shall be extended. The first ring conductor is a half meter below soil, one meter away from the shed. And the second one can be about one meter below soil, but four meters away from the building. So if you wanted to protect uh, buildings with attached uh, roofs, you, also, you can have uh, one a gi pipe a commercially available locally available gi pipe if you use an ms pipe probably the life is less uh, if you use a gi pipe uh, the life is probably a little bit more you can find out the area of uh, protection by the angle method or you can also have a cantonary wire around this particular uh, interconnecting these particular rods as a result the buildings are protected but don't forget to put uh, ring conductor Protection of uh, houses, 
or protection of schools don't remember to protect the children those who are outside the uh, building because most of the time uh, it is the step potential which is uh, creating uh, the problem it is nothing to do with the lateral strike it is called as a step potential uh, now for uh, cyclone shelters uh, this kind of rcc building uh, the people inside the building are protected provided there is no metal plumbing and electricity inside the building if there is a metal plumbing and electricity inside the building you have to make an equipotential bonding otherwise people inside are protected now whatever the rod and down conductor which you are going to give for these kind of buildings are to protect the structure otherwise lightning will strike the structure and the concrete or a piece of concrete may break uh, if uh, electric lines are there use spds and the lps is used for the pur purpose of protecting the structure now this is my last slide lightning protection esc and the lightning protection uh, system in india uh, lightning protection is an amazing story for most of the users uh, the best story gets the award what i wanted to explain to you or what i wanted to show you is uh, imagine a, a client or a user wanted to buy a lighting protection system he calls five vendors and the fellow who makes the best story out of his attractive rod gets the order this is what is uh, going on people respecting national regulations and standards are very very less our standards and regulations are not respected this is one of the reason now i would like to put a, a, an an interesting point one more sentence on the left side you can see two photos and these two photos are called as a lightning protection system called as lightning elimination system or dissipation array system what they say is the equipment on the right side these four items are attracting lightning up to 100 meters whereas this item on the left side is dissipating lightning that means the lightning will not hit you it will go to your neighbor's building so not only we are in india so far we are talking only about this attracting system but this dissipating systems are installed across a uh, uh, lot of our our defense installations uh, and uh, all these installations are unfortunately not protected lot of failures are coming and uh, the most dangerous part is uh, educating children about the non science or wrong science by this i would like to uh, stop uh, thank you very much uh, over to dr shira yeah uh, mr Ch gopakumar thank you very much for this uh, wonderful presentation i hope uh, most of the participants uh, have got the basic idea uh, of what is the difference and what is going on in the india and of course uh, if it is going on in india it is it will definitely impact the whole continent uh, indian continent so that uh, as as a chairman of um, uh, south asian lightning network i am very much worried that uh, such uh, non science stories are uh, going around without uh, any scientific basis uh, and as like a good storyteller so so i i think uh, 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 india has to take i feel a little bit pity on indian part as uh, you know uh, as a big country with lot of scientists in 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 the country such stories are going on and setting the examples in india that will impact definitely impact the neighboring countries so this is a very very sad part for these uh, stories uh, uh, thank you very much anyway uh, mr gopakumar for this uh, presentation now i would like to invite uh, uh, to to kindly comment on these things and uh, have a presentation on uh, uh, what um, uh, his uh, experience is from malaysia i would like to invite professor uh, Jain. Jain. yeah uh, professor janal right. <laughs> yeah yeah yes yeah please over to you uh, uh okay uh, uh, nagabhushma sir this uh, the presentation uh, we can make this uh, nagabhushma sir is next there is a small change sorry okay, all right so okay so it's going to be prof nagabhushma yeah yeah uh, Okay. okay. Uh, Sorry. Uh, please, please go ahead. Go ahead. That will be my presentation. I am Nagabhushna speaking. Okay. Okay. Please. Uh, uh, okay. One second. I have got a few slides. Okay. I must first of all say that the presentation by Gopakumar was very interesting, but the the alarming situations raised by his presentation is really 
very worrying, very, very worrying. As Professor Sriram said, it's worrying not only for few people in India or few hundreds of crores in India, for the whole of uh, South Asian uh, population. It's really very alarming, very, very alarming. I, I can't stop saying alarming, alarming, and alarming. Because lightning has been known to cause a very large number of deaths, more than any other natural calamity in India, 2,000 to 3,000. But still, I'm not uh, very confident about these numbers because there is no authentic way of uh, recording these deaths or injuries, in fact. In fact, if we take the data in USA, where the uh, documentation is very good, they say that the number of injuries is approximately 10 times the number of deaths. If we accept that, in India, it should be about 20 to 30,000 rupees of 20,000 people who are injured. But this, there is no authentic data at all. It is really alarming. I think we need to work very hard towards that. Now, uh, regarding the question of ESE and its extremely doubtful performance, I've got a few slides. The title, of course, I have put as Why Hesitation to Include ESE Lightning Arresters? in IEC, IS standards or any other national or international standards. Why is it? Why are they not recommended for wide general acceptance? This is purely a technical assessment uh, with my limited high order engineering knowledge. IEC, IS 62305 do not accept ESA-based lighting production, except when locations, down conduct systems, and other things are strictly as per conventional as far Conventional Franklin rods, lightning rod systems, the number, the down conductors, the earthing system must be the same as for Franklin rods. Only then it's acceptable. That is a very, very good statement. And then, what are the claims of the manufacturers of the ESE? They say the streamers from the uh, tip of the ESE leader uh, streamer, it moves very fast compared to the streamers from a Franklin rod, therefore it up contacts the lightning leader earlier and then therefore protects the uh, surrounding area. These streamers are claimed to travel a much larger distance and bridge with the approaching leader much earlier than a Franklin rod. That means faster protection, larger area. Now, there is no field photography made available by these manufacturers using obvious high-speed photography to verify the above. Let them do it, I will be the first to accept it. They depend upon very highly debatable experimental work and results, doubtful experimental results because of the way the experiments are planned to claim superiority. I have given some in, in, uh, instances below. In one set of the laboratory experiments, which have been claimed to show the superiority of the um, uh, ESC system, is that a cloud was represented by a two meter by two meter copper plate mounted two meters above the tip of an ESC LP or, or afterwards Franklin rod. The flashover waveforms obtained indicate the time to flashover in case of ESC LP to be 10 microseconds earlier than in case of Franklin rod. Gop Kumar also pointed out that I have shown the figure, figure possible figures here. The time to flashover is 10 microseconds earlier. But and, and they have assumed that the earlier streamers travel very much longer distance in this time, 100 meters or more, giving greatly enhanced production. How did they arrive at this 100 meters? They assumed the velocity of 10 to 6 meters per second is highly questionable. The time available for extra coverage, according to them, is the 10 microseconds, which is the time differential between the flashover timings of the uh, flashover uh, wave shape of the, for the ESC and for the Franklin rod. Now, yes, is the distance in 10 covered in 10 microseconds. If you take the simple product of velocity multiplied by time, it comes to only 10 meters, 10 my, my, uh, 10 sort of 6 meters per second multiplied by 10 microseconds is only 10 meters. How do they claim 100 meters? Am I wrong? Or have they forgotten and inserted one additional zero? Zeros have no value normally, but here it has an enormous value. Now, in another set of experiments, the ESC lighting production scheme and the Franklin rod were placed well apart and equidistant from a HV rod electrode. 10 or more high voltage impulses were applied. 50% of the flashovers occurred to each of these 
ESP and Franklin Arts. I hope people are hearing. Uh, can I have a confirmation whether, uh, whether, whether my speech is being heard? Okay. Yes, yes, sir. We can hear you. Yes. Very good. Now, this, according to them, this completely proves identical performance of the ESP, LP, and the Franklin Rod. So there's absolutely no superiority of the ESC, LP at all, even for this small gap. Go for it. Now, the other objections to these experiments, I have raised only a few, there are many more. The cloud bottom in real life is 2,000 to 3,000 meters above ground or the grounded object. Of course, the grounded object is also ESC or the Franklin rod. Therefore, two meters spacing between the ESC LP and the copper plate is absolutely inadequate, unthinkably inadequate. Note that the height of the ESC LP itself is two meters. And then how can two meters between the tip and the copper plate represent the height to the cloud? And then the electric field will be terribly different. Secondly, the copper plate, two meter by two meters, is, is by itself an equipotential, but the cloud is not an equipotential. So how, what, what sort of representation this? Now, the, cloud, the dimension of two meters width is also not at all adequate. It's not an equipotential, it's not adequate, both. Now, next, what was the voltage level used in these experiments? What was the percent probability of flashover at that voltage level? I'm sure every high voltage engineer knows that the flashover probability of a gap depends upon the voltage. For example, at a certain voltage, there may be no flashovers even if we apply 10 impulses. This is a typical number that we use in laboratories. If I go on increasing, at some level, out of the 10 impulses, only one or two may flash over. They call that 10% flash over probability. Like this, we can go to 50% probability level, which we call the critical flash over level. We go on increasing the voltage further, they get the 100% flash over level. So what was the voltage used in these experiments? And what was the polarity? For positive polarity, it will be different. For negative polarity, it will be different. But in real life, the cloud, the leader from the cloud is more than 75, 80% of the times negative. So what was the polarity used here? Now, what was, yes, that's important. The, in reality, bridging is not with a cloud in reality, but with the leader tip, which will be 2,000 meters below cloud, maybe about 100 meters above the uh, tip of the rod or the ESC situation. So now, I have shown here in this figure, the a sort of hand-written field distribution. In the case of a rod plane gap, it's a highly divergent field. In the case of a rod rod gap, the bottom rod representing either the ESC or the Franklin rod, the upper rod obviously representing the approaching leader, the field is very different. This is a hand-written just like that. If you take an actual plot or if you make a computer simulation, it can be found out that the electric field density at the tip of the ESC or the Franklin rod will be very much different and may be much, much stronger in case of uh, both the rods, in case of both the rods. Therefore, what will be the impact of this rod, rod geometry, the electrode geometry, on this flashover characteristics, will it be? Will you still permit 10 microseconds deviation? And 10 microseconds at what voltage level? As I already mentioned, though so, going further, uh, there are other serious issues that are not in favor of ESC. Now, if ESC is, remember that ESC rod is supposed to be placed in the open atmosphere, either on top of a building or very, very. Uh, wonderfully in an open field, protecting large areas. But what about the influence of the uncontrollable, enormous variabilities of the weather? Effect of relative humidity, temperature, moisture condensation on the ionization region of the ESE, rain and rainwater settling on the ionization tip even before lightning, dust collection at the tip. So what are the effects of these parameters on which we have no control? So each one of the above can very seriously interfere with the function of the ES. LP. Whereas a normal fractal rod is not subject to this at all. So the, the, the behavior of that will be more consistent rather than that of the ESC. But we have to see the performance of the ESC rod under various weather conditions, first of all. First of all, the, the situation is that they say there's an ion 
or electron emitter. In fact, one of the manufacturers in India in his pamphlet says that the ESA tip emits electrons. He forgets that this will be at a positive potential. How can it emit electrons? It defies every simple knowledge of physics, every simple knowledge. That means he is simply dreaming, probably in a completely um, unconscious state, unconscious state totally. So in view of the above, in fact, these are only a few. There can be much more. For example, when the electric field intensity are compared between the rod plane gap and rod rod gap, the electric field intensity at the tip of the rod, ESE or Franklin rod, will be much higher. When the field is much higher, the time lapse may become much less. In fact, these uh, old time characters, as we call in high voltage laboratory experiments, is done very commonly in all uh, good ME high voltage courses. Now, is the electric field strengths are much higher, it's likely that the time lag of 10 microseconds may become very small. Of course, subject to other parameters like the polarity, the presence of the dust, etc., there are other serious issues like that. So on the whole, I feel that the claims made on behalf of the ESE are in no way justifiable, are in no way justifiable. Let me repeat, they are in no way justifiable. Therefore, the very strong hesitation in adopting ESELP will persist for times to come. This hesitation will be definitely 100% sure in the case of even reasonably learned people. But the common people, unfortunately, can be bowled by uh, impressive terminologies and say, I know, unfortunately, unfortunately, in India and probably in many other uh, underdeveloped countries or developing countries, they are bowled by the terminology and they are bowled by the fact that it's an imported ex um, uh, technology. And rather than trying to understand what they say, whether they say what they say is really correct or not. And then the real life situation, as I mentioned earlier, and the weather conditions seems to be impossible for lab experiments. Long gaps, humidity, temperature, settling of the dust, etc. With large gaps, it's quite impossible for laboratory experiments. Because if we want to think of testing a 10 meter gap, we will need at least about uh, four to five megawatts output pulse, that too in outdoor conditions. If even 10 meter gap may not be adequate to represent uh, real life conditions, maybe 50 meters, 100 meters may be right. In which case, uh, we must realize that the highest what is available in the whole world anywhere is about five megawatts simple generator. One of which I have seen is probably in Le Renardia in France itself, or maybe in um, IREC, Canada. That's the Institute for Research uh, in Quebec, Canada. Maybe Brazil has got one laboratory built by the famous um, uh, scientist who's uh, engineer, I forget the name immediately. And the only way of proving, to my knowledge, ESCLP satisfactorily appears to be real life, high speed photography in the field and all physical and weather conditions. That means that at least there must be 20, 30 photographs of that kind covering all the weather conditions. Now, subject to this, only we can even think of seeing the possibility of an ESLP being scientifically acceptable. But from the available data, from the available experiments, and ignoring the very faulty claims, accepting only the real life situations, real physics of the situation is not at all acceptable to my mind. As an academic man, I'll be the first to accept what is what appears to be true experimentally and by proper scientific logic. Uh, I'm, I hope I have made my points clear. If there are any other questions, I'll be happy to answer you. I must thank you, Professor Sriram, and also Gopal Kumar and all the audience for listening to me. If there are any further questions, I may be able to answer. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Nagvushana, for your, your uh, wonderful presentation, making uh, all these uh, experimental results uh, clear among the participants. And uh, I'm, I'm really, really happy to have you here today. Uh, now, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you. I think uh, you'll be able to stay for some time. Yeah, yeah, surely. OK, OK. Uh, before I invite uh, Professor uh, uh, Jainal, I have seen uh, a very, very prominent and world leader uh, on working on lighting protection system, Professor Chandima Gomez, uh, all the way from uh, South Africa. Uh, Professor Chandima, uh, 
am I audible to you? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, thank uh -huh. you very much, Sri, and I'm really, really enjoying uh, thank you. the presentations. Thank you. And it, it, uh, I'm so happy to see Prof. Nagabhushan after many years. Uh, he's uh, one of my mentors. And uh, uh, <laughs> Prof. Uh, Namaskar to you namaskar, and uh, uh, Madam. Uh, uh, yeah, Madam is always behind him. <laughs> yes, I know that very well. <laughs> so, I uh, hope that you all are uh, doing well, safe and sound. I hope the same of you and your family. <laughs> yeah, sure, we are well. We're, uh, life is going on and uh, Prof, you are exactly the same. Uh, by appearance, uh, as I have seen you 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Very, very kind of you. Wish you all the very best, you and your family. <laughs> okay, and thank you very much, Sri, for this nice uh, opportunity yeah, I, I, that you Ch have Chandra, given me. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back to you again a uh, little bit later after Professor Jainal's uh, presentation so that you can comment on what sure, is going on. Sure. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Professor Jainal, uh, I hope you are ready with the presentation. Uh, sorry that I invited you uh, a little bit earlier. Now uh, it's your turn. Uh, could, you, could you please uh, kindly uh, share your presentation or whatever uh, your experience all the way from Malaysia leading the, the, the situation uh, up there? Professor Jainal, okay. Over to you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Professor Mark. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, it is uh, very clear. OK, all right. So uh, just is going to I think first of all, thank you very much. Uh, I mean, thanks uh, to the organizer for the meeting. Uh, I'm happy to share uh, our experience in Malaysia. And also, I think uh, um, it was very insightful and, and uh, very informative uh, uh, you know, presentations from uh, Mr. Gopakuma and Professor. Now, I think uh, there's no need um, for me to, 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 to really cover so much on the ESE. So what I'm going to share is our experience, our obstacles, our uh, hurdles. I mean, for the last, I do not know, most probably uh, 15 years. And happy to share that, uh, you know, uh, uh, my partner in crime, Professor Chan Lima Gomez, uh, was also uh, uh, part of the, uh, you know, I would say, uh, you, you may call it task force, you can, you can call it member, you know, as well, that, um, you know, we have, uh, you know, fought against uh, this um, non-commissional system uh, to be installed in, in the country. Uh, very brief, I'm going to share, uh, you know, what are the issues, uh, you know, sort of the action timeline and, and the outcome that we have uh, experienced. Um, and I'm going to most probably brief a bit on the uh, policy paper and also uh, the uh, act uh, that has been uh, put in place, uh, I mean, for, I mean, since 20, uh, I think last year, 2020, early last year. And we're going to give uh, just a very brief, quick takeaway when it comes to the ESC, you know, uh, protection. <clears throat> One of the issues, um, of course, there are many issues with regards to the non conventional lighting system. It's not just on the ESC, but I think we are talking about the uh, knowledge. I think pretty much those information have been uh, covered by uh, Mr. Gopakuma, very detailed presentations. So, I'm just going to uh, sort of put a, a statement and, and a brief information about the knowledge, about the uh, the fact that there's no risk assessment that even in of the uh, ESC and also uh, and uh, so we, uh, you know um, whatever the information that has been explained in the NFC uh, standard but when it comes to the uh, uh, interpretations of the local vendor especially. So uh, it shows very much, uh, you know, uh, uh, opportunity for the for the vendors, uh, you know, sometimes uh, to make unnecessary uh, action and also justifications when it comes to the specification and locations to be installed. And also um, the fact that um, uh, it was, you know, very aggressive promotions of uh, the non commissioner system, particularly uh, on the uh, ESE. And just to share that we have uh, all those non commissioner systems, we have 
dissipation area system, we have SLE, we have all these CVM, ESC, and all those things, uh, which is based on the basis that uh, it is advanced technology, it is simple installations, and um, it gave a uh, huge reward to the promoter. And also, um, uh, the issues of uh, uh, problems when it comes to the installation and maintenance of the wiring systems. So what happened, I, I think, with the, uh, uh, the, the non-commissioner system, particularly on the ESC, uh, it's very easy installations. You know, you just put one ESC, you have one down conductor, and you have one earth pit, and that's it. So uh, no issue at all. And uh, the fact that uh, when you have the system, uh, you know, uh, integrated with the uh, electrical uh, system, the existing electrical systems, and we have seen so many problems uh, that are faced by uh, the building owners. And also, um, we do have uh, issues with our local engineers, you know, uh, look, I mean, uh, so these are all about the capacity buildings. So lack of interest. Uh, when we say lack of interest, sometimes when we have, uh, uh, you know, like a training programs, uh, um, you know, any platform for discussions. So um, uh, rarely, you know, we, we have all those people who are very much, uh, you know, in the related fields, you know, to come and join for the discussions. So it could be for, uh, it could be due to several reasons. It could be due to cause or fees. Uh, and I think most, most often, uh, you know, due to the attitude, which is very much, uh, you know, I would say that less concern on the uh, issues that, that the country uh, is currently facing. And we do have, um, you know, several products, uh, and especially on the search protective devices uh, that are fake um, and put on shelf. And in fact, we, we, we did, we did, uh, have cases whereby we have uh, um, supplier or vendors or manufacturers from from China and and they came directly to us and asked us to endorse you know their product uh, and also uh, again there was uh, uh, there was a product uh, uh, SLE product from China that um, tried to penetrate the uh, standard committee uh, I mean under the Department of Standard Malaysia and try to have the working group, you know, to develop a uh, product standard and also try to, uh, um, we call try to endorse. And this is due to the uh, huge support from uh, one of the big company in, in the country as well. And last but not least, due to the administrative barrier, you know, sometimes we do not have uh, any accurate information, you know, received. So I uh, just what Mr. Gopal Kumar, you know, explained that when you have the actual things, uh, in the NFC, but when it comes to the translation or interpretation, so um, there's no accurate information, uh, intentionally or could be unintentionally. Uh, unintentionally. So um, those are the issues. Uh, I mean, uh, the country uh, was facing at that particular time, and that led to the uh, uh, I would say like strong um, actions, you know, uh, moved by our uh, Energy Commission of Malaysia. And I think, again, happy to share this document as well, that uh, uh, those informations of the uh, non-commissioner system uh, and also the installations can be found from this document. And also just to support the um, uh, the previous uh, you know, statement from uh, uh, previous speakers that we have, we do have a lot of reports, you know, not, ju uh, not just like, like a couple of reports, but we, we have many reports uh, either from Sigre. So this is from Sigre. Um, uh, that uh, was published and talked on the non-conventional lightning potential system. And also we have uh, one of the experimental work that was carried out by uh, Professor uh, Vernon Kure in Uppsala you know, to uh, establish or rather to prove in you know, the uh, stream of is clearly found that there's not more than 10 to the power of 5, which is uh, uh, against the claim that has been made by uh, by the ESC vendors, and again, this is the one of the experimental work uh, that was conducted um, uh, in 2002, and they actually have replicated, uh, you know, what the ESE uh, manufacturer has has uh, I would say has has carried out the same experimental work. So again, um, the same statement as mentioned by Mr. Gopal and Prof. Gabushina that there's no superiority of the ESC rod. So uh, the chances would be 50-50, regardless when you have the ESC or when you have the uh, you know, normal rod or, or normal you know, lightning conductor. So, uh, and in fact, I think even uh, 
uh, like seven season of uh, you know field testing um, in the New Mexico, uh, one of the university uh, in in the US. They also actually came out that uh, similar thing that in fact there's no security of the ESC as compared to the normal lightning rod. So uh, this is clear clear evidence of showing the failure of the ESC uh, when it comes to uh, its claim. And in 2009, we had cases. So this is one of the, uh, I would say, key uh, incident that leads to the serious uh, uh, actions from the government. Um, it was uh, what we call the, uh, uh, the incident that caused a huge problem to one of the uh, government hospital, Putrajaya Hospital, which is located, uh, I would say, less than a couple of kilometers from the uh, uh, the federal uh, territories, I mean the federal building, administrative buildings, and if the fact that the uh, what we call the uh, the locations of the strike uh, and the distance of the air terminal where the uh, ESE was installed is less than 80 meter, as what you know the claim made by the ESE manufacturer or ESE vendors, the fact that they can even cover up to about 100 meter radius. So this is um, a good example, and in fact before that we do have uh, you know like uh, what we call the reservoir tank uh, that was exploded in 2006 that cost instantaneously 100 over 100 million uh, mission ringgit, which is about 20, uh, 20 over uh, US, you know, million USD. Uh, that also triggered uh, due to the, uh, uh, I mean, they have the ESC uh, system installed. So uh, I think those are the failure. And of course, we have, we have many more pictures, many more uh, evidence to show the failure of the ESE, uh, and just to to uh, to what you call to support, um, you know, whatever the claims on their superiority, and also issues on the uh, the uh, I would say the 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 the, the uh, global agenda on the disaster risk reductions, and one of the things that why we are so concerned because when we refer to this uh, framework, and this is particularly on the right hand side, uh, referring to the Malaysia. We do not have anything, you know, uh, uh, related to lightning. So this is a um, huge challenge for us in particular, I mean, for, I mean, to educate the school children and also the public. We do have everything about the flood, the storm, the haze and whatnot, but we do not have um, any information uh, with regards to lightning. So this is among the um, issues and concern. Um, that triggered the uh, local authority, you know, to look into this matter seriously. And for the last, um, I would say, uh, 11 or 12 years, we have recorded um, the number of injuries and fatalities due to lightning. And uh, of course, when we talk about the uh, database, one of the issues is we you know, always debated um, the integrity of the data. But uh, this particular issues or concern are very much discussed, you know, by other uh, scientists as well. So as best as, as best as we can, so we try to uh, develop our own database and we try to indicate in terms of, uh, uh, you know, on the yearly basis because we do have uh, seasonal variations in the country as well. And also we try to relate on the activities, you know, uh, um, when, when the incident was happened. And uh, you know, finally, we came to the conclusions that you know, if you look at the uh, the ratio between the injury and also the uh, the death, it's not much different. So it's huge as far as the uh, population is concerned. So uh, this kind of thing, um, and in fact, um, uh, we are the one who uh, collecting this particular data at the moment, and we trying our best to you know, to help the government uh, in providing. Uh, you know, the, to the public uh, safety. And this is, uh, I think, very much the key of the presentations. You know, how we came up, how we came up with the, um, uh, with the, with the directive, uh, you know, with the circular and also with the guidebook. So um, I think for the last, again, as I said, for the last 10 years or so, we've been fighting. And in fact, I think since, since 2000, uh, early 2000, uh, huge, we can see here, like huge, uh, uh, you know, demand uh, on the ESC uh, in Malaysia. But then, um, uh, after a series of, uh, you know, engagement and, and stakeholder, you know, finally in 2011, the Energy Commission, which is the local authority uh, under the Ministry of uh, uh, Energy at that particular time, 
uh, has issued a circular uh, that, but at the moment, uh, at that particular time, it is not compulsory, but rather it is, uh, um, uh, they try to make it mandatory, but uh, it's quite difficult because they have to deal with the uh, local government, which is uh, from another ministries. Uh, but still, we can see several uh, local government who took the initiative and uh, rather stringent when putting the uh, uh, what we call the uh, directions and and the rules of the buildings. So whether they like it or not, so the developer has to follow uh, this particular circular. And um, subsequently, in 2014, uh, again, uh, happy to say that uh, you know Prof Chadima was also involved uh, in this particular project. Uh, Malaysia uh, has adopted the IEC 62305 at that particular time, based on 2006 edition. And we uh, have uh, developed um, a very, uh, I would say, uh, so-called easy guide. Uh, uh, it is a cross-reference to the four versions of four series of 62305. And then um, recently, uh, early last year, whereby the uh, paper that, uh, you know, uh, it was a motion uh, by the energy commissions, and they put into the cabinet and that paper has been approved by the cabinet and it became uh, legislative. And in uh, January 2020, uh, that particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, we call it the directive of policy paper has been put in place and become mandatory uh, to be followed by all the practitioners, whether they are, uh, you know, the building owners, um, the association of the consulting engineers, um, uh, and any uh, you know uh, developers, um, uh, they have to follow that uh, policy paper, that directions. So I'm going to share a bit of the contents of uh, this uh, directive. So it was um, approved by the cabinet the fact that because it is uh, related to the Electricity Supply Act 1990, our own you know uh, act on that, and it became mandatory to be followed. And Again, as I said, the applicability of uh, the uh, directions of this policy paper is to all the competent person, to all the electrical contractors, consultants, building owners, and also managements. So all the contents and all the informations are clearly stated in this document. It's local in, in the native language. And enforcement. Um, we gave like a buffer time of, of one to two years, depending on the situations of the buildings. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, this enforcement applicable to all the existing building and also the building under the constructions. So the existing buildings, um, they gave like one year at that particular time. So it was expired early this year that they have to follow if they have the ESC or any non uh, uh, you know, commercial system installed, they have to remove it and they have to properly do the uh, risk assessment, uh, IC 623-05-2. So for those government, uh, for those buildings who are in the constructions or, uh, you know, uh, in the pipeline, uh, you know, about to be uh, to be developed, so they have, uh, you know, uh, instantaneously they have to follow uh, this enforcement and also this uh, directive. And what happens, you know, if if those people, you know, if those uh, this computer person or the contractor or the building owner fail, you know, to commit, you know, to this uh, new rule. So there will be uh, an offense, uh, there will be a fine of 200,000 or 50,000 USD or imprisonment for the term of not exceeding two years or both. So this is how serious uh, uh, the government uh, uh, you know, considered uh, the issue with regards to the ESC and other non-conventional system. So um, finally, we are so happy uh, the fact that you know all the... That is also have uh, 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 practices, uh, and um, and I think so far we have seen uh, a good engagement, uh, 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 and also um, you know I would say the adherence to this uh, particular document, uh, which are currently uh, you know active and and in in place. Uh, so um, we are glad to you know to see that, and I'm happy to share that. Uh, from now on, there's no more uh, ESC or any non-conventional system to be installed in the country. Uh, so it's very clear uh, uh, the enforcement um, is very much active and and uh, you know uh, currently taking place.
So, uh, my last slide. Uh, what would be the quick takeaway for those, uh, you know, building owners or for those engineers or consultants prior to the LPS installations? So, there are a couple of questions that we, you know, uh, either you are the engineers or we are the scientists uh, that we need to, uh, of course, uh, give a uh, appropriate answer to that. The first thing is whether, you know, the consultant and owner understood on the principle of lightning protection system. What are the components involved, you know? Um, what are the lightning protection levels and so on? So what are the needs to carry to carry out the risk assessment and so on? So what are the standards, you know, uh, involved with regards to this uh, lightning protection system installations? And then we need to know whether the proposed system, you know, uh, you know what we call the, uh, you know, has been approved by any international standard. So having said that, you know, when it comes to any international standard, um, you know, either the, uh, we are talking about the IEC, and I think NFC is very much on the product standard. But even as mentioned by Mr. Gopakuma, it's very clear that even, you know, whatever the statement uh, in the NFC, uh, you know, it's not being, uh, you know, rightly, uh, I would say, practiced, you know, or rightly translated uh, when it comes to the installation of the ESC devices. But uh, again, uh, we are, uh, you know, very much um, looking into the approval from it's not just IEC, but also we are looking into the IEEE, the CGRE, NFPA, and so on. Uh, so, which are all against uh, the non-conventional system. Um, as mentioned, you know, rightly mentioned by Prof. Nagabushina, I'm, you know, more than happy, you know, to endorse or to accept if, you know, those system has very scientifically, you know, uh, proven uh, evidence on showing, you know, whatever the questions, you know, whatever the issues that, that we have raised you know, uh, you know, uh, academically when it comes to their claims. And the third one, we need to know that whether there is any technical or scientific evidence, you know, to support the claims. So this is one of the, uh, you know, uh, I think critical things, you know, for the last, again, uh, decade that, that the scientists uh, have asked this ESE uh, human manufacturers and also vendor to support or try to to present their, their, their outcomes and also to provide, you know, any supportive evidence to support, you know, whatever the claims that they have made with regards to the ESD devices. And last but not least, what are the costs should be spent? Because um, what happens is that most often, this is our experience, you know, sometimes when you have, when you have the, uh, uh, you know, the cost of the ESC, which can be hundred of, you know, hundred thousand ringgit or say, for example, like 25,000 USD, you know, and the fact that, you know, what vendor try to uh, uh, educate the uh, building owner, you know, say that, okay, you don't have to install the, you know, the, the normal system because it costs you a lot. It's very difficult to manage and so on. So uh, the fact that, you know, we have uh, so many options uh, in the standards, you know, whether you can use uh, copper, whether you can use GI, uh, aluminium and whatnot. So those are the options which can, again, uh, you know, uh, uh, we can uh, sort of compromise in terms of how much the cost that we should spend. So those are the things that I think we as a practitioner or, or you as a consultant, engineers, I think you should ask, you should ask yourself, uh, you know, you know, prior to, 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 to install, or prior to go for any lightning protection system installations. Then I think we are more, you know, after that, I think uh, we are more than happy, you know, to go for whatever the uh, uh, recommended uh, as per international standard. So I think... Uh, uh, that will be my quick, uh, 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 you know, sharing. But I'm happy to, um, you know, to share or to answer any questions uh, into detail of, you know, how the country like Malaysia, you know, managed to, uh, you know, come out or managed to, you know, come up again against this uh, uh, non-recognized lightning protection system in Malaysia. I think it took, of course, a lot of effort from us, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, platforms for the discussions, a lot of Uh, you know, before we finally came uh, to the decision, we finally finally came uh, to the uh, success story that 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 I've shared, you know, today. So thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Uh, uh, I mean, I pass or you know uh, to you back, uh, Prof Sharma. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Professor Jainal, and uh, I uh, salute you on on behalf of South Asian Lightning Network as well as uh, as a student of. Uh, lightning uh, physics uh, that uh, you you are the hero who could uh, endorse uh, such a scientific uh, based uh, lightning production system in malaysia and you are the leader there 
So I, I have no words to uh, respect your efforts uh, to, to, to tell here. But anyway, this is my regard. Now, I would like to, uh, before I go to the interaction uh, and question answer, I would like to uh, invite uh, Professor Chandima uh, to, to uh, because uh, I, I, uh, I know him uh, very well for a very, very long period, almost two decades. Uh, and uh, for some time in the beginning, uh, like uh, 2003, 2004, Chandima, uh, uh, some people were telling that you are advocating uh, ESE devices, and uh, now uh, you 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 advocate uh, this uh, IEC standard all the way, uh, maybe for 15, 16 years. So, what what is your experience, Professor Andima, regarding this uh, uh, you know, lightning protection system, Professor Andima? Uh, thank you very much, Sri. Uh, actually. Uh, you, you ask a very good question. I mean, for the last uh, 20 years, maybe about plus 18 years, uh, I was at the forefront of uh, educating people against the lightning concept. And uh, one one positive point advantage I have in this regard is uh, I have no personal grudges at all against uh, this technology. The simple reason is that I myself was an ESC inventor in the early 2000, uh, just after my PhD, I was so enthusiastic that according to the NFP, uh, sorry, the uh, the French standard, uh, I developed uh, an ESC uh, device, which is in the market, I think still, but I abandoned my own baby when I found that uh, <coughs> the technology is uh, sheer rubbish. Uh, so uh, let me let me take very very short period, a uh, few minutes. Uh, one thing I can tell all of you is that actually there is a war that uh, we have declared against ESC proponents. Uh, but in the present context, if everybody can think well, uh, we don't need a war. Actually, one individual, uh, one single factor can negate all the claims of ESC proponents. Just one single scientifically observed, scientifically proven fact can totally destroy the entire claims made by the ESC proponents. What is that? As uh, Prof. Nagabhushan uh, very clearly uh, shown you, and it was in uh, uh, Mr. Gopakumar's presentation as well, how do the ESC manufacturers and the French standard is going to calculate the length advantage? That is, they multiply the length, uh, the time advantage, delta T, into 10 to the power 6, and this 10 to the power 6 is very arbitrarily taken as the speed of leader, the answering leader going from the building uh, as a constant factor. And don't forget that this has been taken in the, in the mid-90s or early 90s. And uh, there was no scientific proof at that time uh, for taking this value. They just taken it. So, for an example, if the time advantage is T, capital T, then the length advantage or the virtual height of the air termination system, they say T into 10 to the power 6. Now, after 20, 25 years today, we have very sophisticated, high speed, high resolution video cameras. Now for the last uh, three years or four years, uh, there were extensive studies uh, went on in Brazil and in South Africa, in Johannesburg, on measuring the speed of answering leaders 
with these sophisticated cameras. And the result, now it is published in uh, very high impact factor international journals, the speed is 10 to the power 4 meters per second. Now imagine if you multiply the time advantage T by 10 to the power 6, you get 100 meters. But actually the speed of the answering lead is 10 to the power 4. So that means if the, the acclaimed uh, time advantage is there in, uh, uh, in the ESC products, still the length advantage is 100 times less. So if they claim that they have a 150 meter height advantage when they have an ESC rod of one meter, according to the now proven and firm solidified scientific facts, the actual virtual height is 1.5 meters. And for 1.5 meters, are you going to pay several lakhs of rupees? Instead of that, you can very easily have a copper rod of that height, isn't it? So, so with this point itself, I think we can demolish the, the claims made by ESC proponents. I challenge anybody in this audience to, to just raise your hand and, and challenge this argument. I'm very happy to answer. And the second point I would like to say is that uh, Mr. Gopakumar gave, I think for the first time uh, in this uh, ETA war against ESC devices, uh, I listened to, actually, I have seen this presentation uh, yesterday uh, or day before yesterday as uh, Mr. Gopakumar, uh, Dr. Sriram and I had a personal uh, meeting. It, it was the first time I have seen that somebody is very clearly pointing out that there is no difference in the French standard and IEC 62305 except for the attraction radius of the ESC device. So apart from that, all other uh, parts of the uh, the the lightning protection system should be exactly the same between IEC standards and the friend standard. So now, when we have done surveys in countries like Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, then uh, Malaysia, and so on, we have found that most people, ninety percent of the people who go, go for ESC technology. Uh, just uh, select that option because of the cost. They, they think that this is one of the major uh, points that the ESC uh, vendors put forward. The cost of ESC system is much less than the cost of uh, IEC uh, uh, standard uh, designed uh, lightning protection system. But now the thing is that if they are sticking to the French standard in the installation, the only difference is instead of, say, 10 uh, co copper rods or aluminium rods that we install in a building, uh, maybe 2, 3, 4, 10, 12, uh, the ESC people install only one ESC rod. And now if you look at the cost of the ESC rod, I'm sure that you can buy 100 copper rods with that price, okay? So in order to fool the public, what the ESC manufacturers do is instead of going for the French standards, which actually the Bible of the the ESC technology 
or the ESS standard, they just develop their own ways of doing that and have one ESC rod and one down converter. I think I will stop at this point. You see how much these people are fooling you. So, uh, for, I mean, unfortunately, I may say it was only Malaysia who could make the scientific community could make the government accept or convinced that this ESC technology is a nonsense so that the government came up with these uh, strict regulations uh, thanks to my brother Zaina and uh, uh, and there were several people in this regard so we were successful in Malaysia and uh, we are trying to do the same in several other countries. Hopefully, we will be successful in the future. Thank you very much, Shri, uh, for oh. offering oh. me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Prashtanima. Uh, you are here all the way from South Africa. So, yeah, wonderful experience uh, from uh, almost two decades uh, uh, back. Now, uh, I have seen uh, Dr. Murali Das, uh, who has, uh, who was in very extensively involved in this education, lightning protection and awareness raising. So, may I invite uh, uh, Dr. Murali Das to uh, have some comments? Yes. Sir. Yes. You see, yeah. I'm a person who has uh, worked in more, you know, both uh, fair weather atmospheric electricity as well as in lightning. Therefore, for me, this early streamer is something which uh, I, it's simple for me to say that such a thing will not work. In uh, lightning, there is what is called a global uh, electrical circuit. When you have a circuit like that, where lightning is a part, is, uh, does the function of a generator, and in this circuit, you put something and say that I can produce a um, longer streamer, early streamer. This is uh, simply nonsense. The reason why these people are able to advocate and sell these things is, even in plus two level, even people are start, taught uh, well, uh, this, uh, static electricity and electricity, people get confused with static electricity. So people are under the impression that uh, this lightning is all about el uh, static electricity or something like that. When they don't understand, it is uh, convenient for these people to sell all these early streamer uh, devices and uh, what is that neutralizing devices and all that. And it is known, very well known, that uh, there is no difference between uh, different kinds of trees. For example, you have palm tree and the jackfruit tree. There is no difference in uh, lightning strike because of the shape. So you have a different shape of um, uh, lightning rod and say that it will send a, a streamer up. Or even if you have a circuit inside, you cannot have a streamer sent up, never. This is something uh, for people like me who had to do uh, sensors for atmospheric electricity, fair weather electricity, and uh, lightning uh, cloud field measurement. It is something which we can easily understand. So the problem is for the common man or the people who don't know, what they do is, if next door for of you know, buys an uh, ESC, uh, uh, um, this thing, I will also buy that. But lightning doesn't come daily. So these people have the advantage that uh, they will uh, keep on selling. Myself, Mr. Govagumar, uh, Professor Nagabhushana, and uh, Professor Chandima Gomes had uh, gone for a workshop in, uh, I think, in uh, Bangalore. So some people had come from uh, Chennai. Yeah. They were saying, they, uh, they were being sold this ESC devices at a cost of 3.5 lakhs in two, uh, 2006. At that time, the installation of a normal lightning rod system would have cost only 15,000 rupees. Why are they able to sell? First of all, the lightning is not a regular phenomenon. Second thing, people don't know how exactly it works or what, what, the, what, the, what it does. At the same time, these people, the buyers, never adhere to Bureau of Indian Standard, which is the, it is very bad. I have seen that Malaysian effort to have in nine years, they were able to bring it out as a regulation. I think this effort by this group and uh, to say that this ESC is a nonsense is very good. I think we should continue it 
and probably if you continue like this maybe we will also be helpful in bringing out a regulation and that is the only thing that can work finally very good all the presentations are very good most of the, all the presentations are based on experiments the result of which shows that ec is a nonsense i think we should continue our effort very good presentations and thank you uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Muldas, uh, for your uh, nice words and your wonderful experience uh, working with the uh, static electricity and lightning. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, I, I understand that uh, today the participants and uh, all the all the uh, audience uh, here uh, got to know very well about uh, these uh, fraudulent. Uh, uh, you know claims from the from the proponents. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Murlida, uh, Murlida, uh Again, uh, right. now I would like to invite uh, uh, Mr. Gopakumar Kumar for taking up, taking up some questions. There are not many questions. Uh, would you take up the questions by yourself, uh, uh, Mr. Gopakumar? Uh, <clears throat> because uh, it looks like uh, there is not uh, much question. I I can't find any questions. Not much, not much. A couple yes. of questions, but uh, we, we can always uh, uh, send the e link or uh, video link to the uh, people or uh, participants here, isn't it? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, the people uh, for the for your information for all the registered participants. Uh, once when you open up the Teams uh, app, you will be able to see all the uh, comments and uh, in the comment if you look at the chat. Uh, in the Teams app, at the top of the chat, you will be able to see uh, all the files which we uploaded. Files in the sense the uh, their documents like uh, the different study reports and other documents are already uploaded. You can see that there were also some video links. Uh, like uh, I, have, I have shown that the people are educating wrong uh, things about uh, lightning. So those videos are also put uh, on the chat box. You can download it and see it. So. Uh, by this, uh, probably, uh, uh, Dr. Nagabhushna, sir, any final words from you? Yes, I would like to add a few points, uh, Mr. Gopakumar. Uh, some of the points were raised by you. Uh, you mentioned a test report from CPRI on the current caring ability of the ESC rods. I have seen the report myself. They have passed the current through the down conductor essentially, or not through the air terminal, but the rest of the conductor. Uh, if anybody, any of the people are interested, let me tell you, even a 8 millimeter diameter copper rod can handle up to 200 kiloamperes. We have done it many, many times in our lightning test facility. Regarding the lightning test facility, I must mention that we were funded by Aeronautical Development Agency in 1989 to set up a, a lightning test facility for testing of aircraft components, mainly light combat aircraft stages. We can have got up to four megahertz generator. We can go up to two megahertz at the moment because of certain other restrictions. If anybody is interested in carrying out the experiments, we will be happy to conduct the experiments and show them the performance of the ESC rod or the ordinary Franklin rod. I would welcome them. That's point one. Point two is the current test capability. We can pass 200 kiloamperes through the air terminal of the ESC and see if they are interested, we can show them whether it can stand it or not. Because there's no use sending it through the 80 square millimeter down conductor. There's no use at all. The air terminal also must be capable of doing that. And then um, the most important thing, one of the important things regarding this 10 for 6 meters per second is that that might be the velocity at the initial point, point of initiation, where the electric field intensity is the highest. They remember the velocity will be directed and will be dictated completely by the electric field intensity. That's the driving force. As the electron or the as the passive ions move away, the electric field gets reduced drastically, is inversely proportional to the radius of curvature at least for some distance. Afterwards, it will remain at a very low level. Therefore, the velocity goes down from 10 to 6 meters per second. It is highly debatable. But if any of them want the test to be done, we can do it. We can go up to about 3.5 meters gap spacing without much of a problem. I would like to welcome them. But I would also like to mention at this point, the whole proceedings have been very, very nice. I enjoyed it. Professor Zainal, uh, apart from Professor, uh, Mr. Rope Kukbar, Professor Zainal's presentation, and then Chandima's presentation, and then who else? Uh, Muridas, of course, is a very good friend of mine. Uh, they made very interesting presentations. Only thing is our general public 
must be made aware of the reality and not simply by the vocabulary of the impressive terminology of these people. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you once again. It has been a wonderful opportunity for me to come back to this subject in a formal way. Huh? Thank you, Gopu Kumar. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Huh. So uh, I think few people had raised their hand. Probably instead of uh, chatting, they have some question. I will. Uh, I would like to uh, unmute uh, uh, Mr. Vinay Nagdio. Uh, he is our uh, member in the uh, uh, our uh, expert committee, technical committee of uh, Vidyut Surakshit Bharat. Uh, he is a superintending retired superintending engineer from the Electrical Inspectorate of uh, uh, State of Maharashtra. Uh, sir, you can unmute and uh, speak. Uh, you have raised your hand. You can unmute and speak, sir. You have to unmute first. Uh, I think uh, he is not there. Then also, uh, uh, I could see uh, uh, a name, uh, PC Kalra. I would say probably this is Dr. Pierce. PC Kalra, sir, uh, you have raised your hand. If you have any questions, uh, I am unmuting you. Uh, so you can, uh, uh, if you have any question, you can unmute yourself now and you can speak. Also a question from Mr. Raja Ganapati and uh, Mr. Murali Dara. I have a question. Uh, now we talk about uh, lightning surge of 200 kilo ampere. Now this thing, when I'm designing a house in a town or a small building, say in an area, do I need to consider uh, protect my building for a lightning surge of 200 kilometer? Transmission lines, even most of the transmission lines in uh, sub distribution system have a lightning arrest of 9 kilo ampere. We had been making buildings and protecting our system with the Franklin rod. Now, I want you people to define which are the building or which are the installation which need to consider 200 kilo ampere or 9 kilo ampere or 20 kilo ampere. These things, you know, should be uh, categorized so that uh, we don't spend too much money uh, for nothing. You know, I Mr. Gopakumar, can I answer that question? Yes, sir. Uh, I don't. I don't remember the name of the gentleman who was speaking. PC, PC See, Kalra. PC Mr. Kalra. Doctor Kalra. Doctor Kalra. Yeah. Kalra. I would like to elaborate like this. The oh. the ten kilo ampere surge arrestor that's used on power transmission systems is for carrying the current resulting from a lightning stroke the transmission line conductor. There the highest current. Estimated has been up to about 100 kilo amperes. Therefore, if you if you see the standards, you will see that these surge arresters are supposed to withstand two shots of 100 k a wave shape of four microsecond by 10 microseconds. Rise time is four microsecond. Tail time is 10 microseconds. Now the current of 200 kilo amperes we are talking about is a current which flows through the down conductor. As I told you earlier, a conductor of date approximately eight millimeters diameter copper can carry this current. The temperature rise being to 300 degrees for momentarily for a few seconds in still air. In normal air, the temperature will drop down very quickly. So if you think of say 10, 10 15 millimeters diameter conductor, it can very comfortably handle 200 kilo amperes. You don't have to be worried at all. A standard such a uh, lightning conductor, Franklin rod, will be able to handle it very comfortably. There will be absolutely nothing to worry. In fact, the two are totally unrelated. In the case of power systems, a 10K arrestor can, that's called what's called the rated current or the nominal current rating of the arrestor. That's a 8 microsecond by 20 microsecond um, wave shape. Whereas high current, it is rated for two discharges of 100 kA. It can handle that. There's no problem about that. I hope I have clarified. If you have, still have doubts, I will be happy to answer that. No, my question is, yes. that 100 kilo ampere discharges, huh. do I have to design every building for 100 kilo ampere? No, you don't have I, to. Worry I am about designing that. a small building where there is a one sub-distribution board and a few dBs. So uh -huh. you want me to install some surge arresters on that. Do I need to install surge arresters of 100 kilo ampere or 20 no, kilo no. ampere? So, no, I mean, those, you have to 
define where do I need 100 kilo ampere, where do I need 200 kilo ampere, and where do I need 12 kilo ampere? Sir, these are very well defined in the ISI. Uh, the voltage surge you will get in and such and buildings like that are due to are due are due to induced voltages, not due to direct voltages. Therefore, the currents will be very very small, maybe the order of a few kilo amperes. That's all. You don't have to worry about that at all. If you use the standard, if you follow the standards, you'll be more than safe. Nothing to worry about that part. Yes, sir, does, what I'm yes. saying does demographic demography makes any uh, difference? I know. I used to stay in Chicago. There used to be very loud thunderstorms uh, yes. almost every day. Yeah. So, say upper hemis uh, north sphere and south sphere, you can have uh, uh, isochronic level can be very high. But uh, demographically, uh, I feel that you can specify that which are the areas to need this this kind of a. Uh, uh, surge arrestor or lighting arrestor? For surge arrestors inside residential buildings, you don't have to worry about at all this currents of 100 kilo amperes or so whatever it is. Uh -huh. Few kilo amperes will be more than adequate because they are always, the currents are due to indirect lightning, not due to direct lightning at all. You just don't have to worry about that. But if you, whatever you said about Chicago is different. See, thunderstorm is right, thunders are right. But typically, if you take the isochronic level map of India, in IS, IS there is, I don't remember the number very clearly. What is that IS number? Yeah. Huh? Uh, anyway, whatever yeah. the number. No, I think huh. building, building like the Google center, the Google data center, and huh. so some buildings, say hospital in uh, say Delhi, they, they don't uh, follow, the, they shouldn't follow the same standard and same high surges. I know see, the Google, uh, Google data center is a very, very, very high value property and they can uh, protect themselves against the worst situation. But a small hospital or a school uh, in a town area, they don't need to protect themselves with against uh, such heavy things and spend, spend money. Right, sir, yeah, you right. very much uh, explained in the risk assessment, sir. In the, if you do a risk assessment, all these questions uh, will be answered. So a, a small building, you have to do a small protection. A high cost building, you have to do a high cost, high insulate. This is there in the standard. And the mm -hmm. rating of surgery sure. are also given in the standard. Mr. Gobu Kumar, can, yes, can, I add, can I add something about to that question, please? Yeah, yeah yes, sir. You see, when uh, the typical return stroke current, and I say typical, you can say the average also, it is about 15, 20 kilo amperes. The maximum current can be 100 kilo amperes. So when you say typical or average and then maximum, that means 100 kilo amperes comes in once in a blue moon only. But it is rare. You can, you, there is no necessity for you to design for the maximum always. So, and another thing is that, the damage that is done in um, fire accidents and things like that is done by what is called the continuing current, which happens in the second stroke on or so and lasts for several hundreds of milliseconds. The burning of the holes in metal, etc., is done by the continuing current. So that is only a few hundred amperes lasting for a longer time. Summing up, when you do a design for such an accident, you know, this thing, etc., you do for the average or typical value, and the, you you cannot design for the maximum. Maximum is about 100 or 200 kiloamperes. There is no necessity to design for that maximum because you don't expect always that to happen. For example, if you have one percent of the population having a particular disease, you don't have to worry about it. When it crosses to 30 or 40 percent, then you start worrying about it. Worrying about it. But similarly, I would say if I am in your place. If they're in your shoes, I would design for only for 15 to 20 kilo ampere, whichever be the building. So all the, uh, the standard protection systems and conductors, etc., I will take care of that. I mean, even if it 100 kilo amperes comes, it, it, it with all the systems, it that system protection system may burn out, the wire may burn out. That is all. But you are the rest okay. of the things will be protected. Okay. So thank thing. you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank no, you no, very much, sir. I, so I have just one small question. Now on the sloping roof of uh, the metallic roof, uh, most of the time the, uh, the client doesn't want to put the strips there. He says, I don't want to puncture my sh uh, sheet. 
Ah, and ah, even see. the down conductors of the building, uh, high rise building, the architect doesn't want to see any visible conductor. And the architect ah. doesn't want to see too many spikes on his roof. Now, uh, how do you uh, mitigate uh, uh, the aesthetics with the technical requirements? Sir, very simple, sir. Very, very simple. Nowadays, a lot of buildings have got steel uh, <coughs> uh, handrails. The steel handrail can be used. Or some steel structural architectural things. So those can be used. So as you said, uh, in the in the construction industry, routing down conductor is always a big question. But uh, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, since it looks uh, it, it don't looks nice, uh, we have to we should not show down conductor. So uh, in a lot of places, I know that instead of five uh, ten down conductors, five five two groups routed through two shafts. These things will not work. But uh, it is anyway, as um, lightning protection uh, engineers, or, or uh, we have to strictly follow the rules. So thank you, sir. Thanks for the question. Okay. So I have uh, Mr. Uh, thanks. Jai Patke. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Okay. So Mr. Jai Patke or uh, Mr. Uh, Ilam Peruma. So there are few people who had raised their hand. I think if there is no questions, uh, probably uh, Dr. Shriram, we can uh, close the event. Yes, I think uh, uh, the, the the protection system itself is uh, very well documented in IEC 62305. So I would request all the participants to refer to the document. If not, uh, you have uh, Indian standard where uh, everything is explained very well. So I request all of you to refer to the standards. So with that, uh, if you have for any further technical issues or questions, uh, we, we can uh, answer them but uh, through the mail so kindly uh, stay in touch and uh, i would uh, with this i would like to uh, uh, close this session because we are uh, running almost uh, uh, over the uh, riding over the time so uh, uh, may i uh, request all of you to kindly uh, be in stay and uh, uh, close the session uh, i think uh, we should just uh, uh, stop this uh, presentation yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. And finally, very big thanks to Dr. Sriram for nicely uh, uh, managing it. Thank you very much. So the event is going to a close. I shut Thank up. you very much. All the best to all of you. Uh, very Thank happy you, season. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Right. Have a good day. Thank you, Chandima. Thank you, Mulita, yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Thank Professor you. Sriram, Thank Professor Chandima, Professor yes, Dr. Mulidas, yes. Professor Zainal. Wonderful. Yeah. Being with you, of course, on the line, is a, it has been a delightful experience. We hope we have some research. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Bye. Thank you. Bye.